What's up? Ghost Fictions is here, and we're back again. This is the second part of a story where Issei was the son of the heavenly dragon Drake. But before we start, please consider subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Don't forget to check the description for more informations. Now, let's get into part 2. Time skipped two days later. Issei woke up from his slumber. As he tried to get up he felt more heavy than usual. He pulled up the covers to see who it was, and to his surprise, it was Grafia of all people. Issei widened his eyes well, I didn't expect this. Issei began to have conflicting feelings. He was happy because he knows that Grafia loves him. However, on the other hand, paranoia and a hint of fear. Issei wasn't scared of women, but due to a past, which he wishes to forget, he's scared of being in a relationship again. The fear was not for him, but concern and worry for those who might want to get closer to him. Would it be alright to love again to relive what it was like back then? No. If I do that, then it'll be just like last time, if not worse. Issei gained a downcast look. Ever since I lost her, I could never be in another relationship with anyone, out of fear of losing those who are dear to me, just like how she was to me. Issei comes out of his thoughts from Grafia stirring within her sleep. MHMMM. Grafia squeezed into Issei's chest tightly. Issei tries to escape out of the death grip he was forced to endure without waking the Silver Maiden. After the one minute struggle of wriggling, Issei was finally free to roam. Minutes go by after putting on his cloths and eating breakfast, Grafia came down the stairs in a sleepy and groggy fashion. The ICE. Grafia spoke with a tired tone, making Issei chuckle internally. Yes, Fia. Issei smiled. Why? Why did you leave me? Grafia went next to Issei's back and hugged him from behind. Had to get up, get dressed and have energy for later. Nu, no, I have my ice pillow. Grafia began to fall asleep again, and Issei was struggling not to laugh. Alright, come here. Issei then turns around to face Grafia and hugs her. Warm. Grafia smiled cutely with her eyes closed. Issei sighed as he struck in Grafia's silver braided hair. Poo Academy. Old school building. Issei sat on a couch and calmly waited for a certain someone to to arrive. Minutes later. A red gremory magic circle spawned on the floor. What came out of the, the circle was none other than the good old Zetches himself sporting a happy grin. Zetches, nice to see you again, been well I hope and how's Benalana? Hello master, yes I've been well and mother is fine as always. Anyway how about you? Zetches, I've told you many times, call me by my name, you know I'm not one for formalities. Anyway, it's been something. As you can tell I met your sister and her peerage, with pride if I might add. Rescued an ex-nun, twice, and I've come to view her as my little sister. At a raging fit because some rouge fallen that were stationed in the abandoned church, tried to take the nun's sacred gear and kill her in the process. Sophia again, had a long chat with her. Scared the absolute shit out of the phoenix and his peerage, as well as getting to challenge him, hopefully ending his pitiful existence in this battle. Issei said with disgust at the end. Serziches. Serziches knows the kind of damage Issei can do when pissed, it has happened before. Th that's wonderful Issei, I felt your aura all throughout the underworld. I would say go easy on Riser, but knowing you. You don't hold back when you are serious, nor your brutality. I've learned that firsthand. Serziches shivered remembering Issei's violent, grueling and harsh training methods. Yeah, well tell that to the now dead fallen crow wannab scumbags, who took someone I see as a part of my family. Issei gained a face of annoyance. I completely understand with your logic. Serziches laughed awkwardly. Well, are we going to stand here all day and chat or am I fighting Riser? Issei smiled maliciously. Serziches only nodded an answer. Issei was then teleported to the game, however everything was the same at first glance, but the difference. Was the sky that looked like the Aurora Borealis just bigger and more vibrant? So, a replica of the school grounds I see. Issei furrows his brow. Time to get serious. Issei walks out of the old school and marches onward to the middle of the arena. While on the other side. What does he think, he's doing, does he have a death wish? Riser arrogantly states, even though that the event two days ago had scarred him. He wouldn't back down for his pride as a member of Phoenix was on the line. Back with Issei. Alright Riser, I want you and your whole peerage with the exception of Ravel to come out and give me everything you can muster. Issei shouted. Time for judgment. Issei grins. Issei waited a few minutes for the opposing side arrived. So, you're finally here. I was getting bored. All the female peerage except for Ravel were present. So, who's coming at me first or are you all of you going to attack at once? Issei slammed both fists into each other. Even though you have scarred us and our king, we will not back down to such a cocky person like you. Ha. No, I'm just confident. Riser sent all of you to die, like lambs to a slaughter. 1. Issei held out his hand. Come to me, Yamato. 
Then blue flames appeared in his outstretched hand, which took the form of a sword. Yamato. 4. Issei looked at the sword in its sheath. Ready to scare the shit out of some devils. Yamato responded with a light sizzle like it was saying yes. This will take only one clean move. Issei got into a stance and put Yamato to his hip. Issei grabbed the hilt of the sword with his right hand, while his left hand held the scabbard. Everyone was wondering what he was doing, even those in the spectating booth apart from three individuals. Issei smirked. Judgment cut, and. And out of nowhere, Issei disappeared and in the next second, dozens of slashes are seen suspended in the air, and all of Riser's peerage, with the exception of both Riser and Ravel. As this happened, Issei reappeared behind all of them with his left knee on the ground, while his right foot was planted on the ground. Issei then brought Yamato back into its scabbard, left way horizontally, which turned into a downward vertical halfway through. When Yamato's guard and scabbard connected, everyone fell to the ground with very little movement, until blue lights exuded from their bodies and Grafia call out. Lord Riser's queen, one bishop, two knights, two rooks and eight pawns retired. Grafia announced. Spectator's booth. Okay. What the fuck just happened? A man that was similar to Riser's appearance, but like he was in his thirties spoke with utmost disbelief. That Lord Phoenix was not even a one one thousandth of a fraction of my master's power. Serzichas stated proudly. Everyone was flabbergasted except Grafia, Serzichas and Venelana. Indeed when Issei taught us before the civil war, he would push us to our limits, and even breaking them to some degree. Venelana. Wait, why wait, so you are saying this? Boy. Has lived even before the civil war? Lord Phoenix questioned. Yes, exactly that, his birth was one year after the events of the Great War, making him older than any one of us. Venelana said. Lord Phoenix and anyone else's eyebrows rose with complete surprise. What? Lord Phoenix screamed. Then, who's the father and mother of this person? Theamat the chaos karma and drag the heavenly dragon. You know what, why am I even surprised? And he's the one and only wielder of the boosted gear, which also makes him the only red dragon emperor in existence. Venelana grinned. Whoa, whoa. He's a pure-blooded dragon. Well, apparently due to being Drake's son and the fact that after his death, the sacred gear system has not been functioning well. And due to that, I'd say that the boosted gear searched for someone compatible. However, Issei must have been the most compatible at the time. At this point Lord Phoenix didn't speak anymore. Back to Issei. Issei made his way to the student council room. Now that they are down. I can deal with the main boss. Issei smirked under his breath. With Riser. Well, shit. Fuck it, if Riser's going down, Riser's going down in a blaze of glory. Riser said knowing his defeat was inevitable. 1. Riser quickly made his way outside. The two interlink. Issei came face to face with Riser with a malicious grin plastered on his face. So, Riser, here we are. This place will be your grave. Keep talking, brat. Riser clenched his teeth. Brat. No, no, no Riser, you've got it all wrong. See it isn't I who is the brat here in fact, tis you who is the brat. DCH, what are you saying? I'm saying that you, cocky devil are far, far, far younger than me. That is not possible. You look like that you are 17 or 18 at the very least. Ha! Ah, is that what you think? Issei grinned while raising an eyebrow. I, who has lived for 600 years. I, who has trained both Venelana Gremory back when she was still a Bale and Serzichas who is her son and firstborn, I have trained them to and past their limits, time and time again. Riser widened his eyes. What? Did you think Serzichas was born as strong as he was and got more powerful as he got older? The answer to that Riser is, no. No one is born strong, the only entities that deify this logic are both the dragon gods. Great Red and Office along with the first generation of dragons as they were born from the high amounts of condensed energy. And quite frankly both of my parents are in that group. As my father, Drag and my mother, Tiamat were born from their respective energies. However, dragons after that were born though the process of reproduction. And I am one of those dragons. I was born 609 years ago. One year after the Great War concluded. As years passed the stronger I got because I trained and trained and trained, till I got to the place I am at now, and you want to know what? I'm still training. Why? Simple there are two individuals out there that I am hunting for and yes, well the strength I have to defeat them is more than required, it is always nice to have that extra bit of power. I will show everyone here my true form for you to understand to see how outmatched you are. Issei's grin grew viciously. Issei's dragonic aura began flowing off his body which created a thick layer of red and blue miasma. Spectator's booth. Brother, does he mean? Riaz looked toward Serzichas. Yes Riaz. He means exactly that. Serzichas responded. Even though he has trained us, out of all of us, only Serzichas has seen his dragon form personally. Venelana said with a smile. 
Hmm, I see. Boom. All eyes were now on the colossal amount of aura that exploded from Issei. Back with Issei. Issei's raw power and aura was that strong it was tallying a 9 on the Richter scale. For those who don't know what the Richter scale is, it is a method for calculating the strength and size of an earthquake. The higher the number the stronger the quake. Boom. Issei grew his scales, teeth, claws, tail, and began to increase in size to a colossal amount. At the end of the transformation. Issei was now a staggering 80 meter dragon in hide alone. Issei's dragon form. I absolutely love this picture. 3. D-A-H-H. Everyone except Serzich's couldn't even comprehend what just happened. Now they are lucky they didn't shit themselves. Riser other hand. I I I. Riser screamed his lungs out to the highest pitch he could possibly make like an infant's vocal cords on steroids. Brewer. Issei roared to the heaven with such ferocity it caused the whole structure of the school to collapse on itself. Now with buildings turned to rubble, Issei faced a phoenix. Riser. Issei shouted in a deep menacing dragonic voice which made all of the surrounding area quake. Issei got down on all fours to give Riser the sense of imminent death. Riser began to experience a painful heart attack, the only reason he hasn't dropped dead from the immense stress and fear is because his phoenix's hyper-regeneration that keeps reviving him faster than he could die. And the more he stared at the huge ass dragon, staring directly into his demonic soul that was getting closer and closer with each passing second. Issei got closer with his predatory gaze. Issei grinned like an insane psychopath. Time skip, one hour later. Issei brutalized Riser in the utmost extreme way. Throughout the hour, Issei inflicted terrible mental damage to Riser's psyche via intense burning, deep scarring cuts and slashes, bone breaking, amputation and beheading, last but not least being crushed and exploded under violent pressure. While that was going on all of Riser's peerage who were in the hospital watching the scene unfold, every single member kept on heaving up all of their contents and passed out many times. Up in the spectator's booth. Rias and Sona's peerages had all purged their morning breakfasts, and if not all of Sona and her peerage fell unconscious as well. However, Akeno was the only one enjoying how brutal Issei is, she's practically wet in her undergarments, the feeling of labored breath, bright red flushed cheeks, and the urge to be dominated by the red and blue dragon. Rias, who was still conscious, barely, looked at Akeno with a WTF face. I know she's a ultimate sadist and all but, seriously. What in the name of Lucifer? Rias then looks at her brother, father and mother. All of them looked at her and shrugged their shoulders as to say who knows. 1. Back to field. Then n n u s stop, p please. Riser begged. Riser Phoenix has forfeited, Issei Y Gotch Haidu is the winner. Grafia's voice called out. Riser started to glow blue. Issei took a long deep breath into his lungs. He did the mightiest of roars. The victory roar was so loud that it reached the dragon territory in the underworld. In unison all of the dragons roared to celebrate their true king's return. Issei had teleported out of the arena and ended up outside of the orc, as he was still in his 80 meter dragon form. Rias and her peerage raced out of the old school building. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Rias tackled Issei's right foot while streaming with tears. Issei smiled sincerely. The Keno had an obvious flushed face. An echo had a look of fright and fear. Fiba had a pale face from the vomiting. Issei laughed wholeheartedly. Issei changed his appearance to that of a smaller and cute version of his regular form. This form spans to two one half meters in length. Rias got so excited seeing his cute form, she didn't hesitate to hug him with everything she had. Oh ML. You are so adorable. Rhea squealed like a little girl. Issei would neither deny that being hugged like this again, nor comply whether he disliked it. But, it did bring back memories. Memories that once gave Issei cheerful and bright happiness, now turned to deep dark depression and sadness, honestly it's a wonder he hasn't become an evil dragon yet. Being hugged by anyone except his mother. Anyone else, well, those repressed memories would come back to haunt him. And currently that's exactly what is happening. Issei is going through an event of PTSD. Issei started to tremble and Rias could feel it. Then Issei's heart rate increased to abnormal levels. If Issei was in his human form he would be sweating. Like dogs, in his dragon form, he can't sweat. And as if on cue, pain panting could be heard from him. Issei, what's wrong? Rhea said worried, but Issei didn't respond. He looked into the distance. At this point Akeno, Kiba and Kaneko also started to worry about Issei. Issei snapped out of his trance and struggled to break out of Rhea's grip. After he broke out, he landed on the ground and had a trembling fit. Then he looked up to the fore with fear, longing, loss and sadness. Issei. Rhea's muttered in worry. Issei then flew away. Issei. Rhea shouted. We need to get Serzich's. Akeno spoke. I agree, hopefully Big Brother can tell us why Issei reacted the way he did. Few hours later. Brother. 
Rhea shouted as a red magic circle appeared. Surziches came through the circle with Grafia in tow. Rhea's, what happened? Where is Issei? Surziches said worried. I, I don't know. One moment I'm hugging Issei's cute and adorable miniature dragon form, the next he starts to have a panic attack and jumps out of my grasp. He. Looked. He looked hurt, what happened to him? Rhea started to cry as well as the other two girls, but Kiba. Kiba was clenching his fist so tightly, he might as well be bleeding from his hands. Surziches looked at Grafia and nodded to each other. Listen. All of you. Surziches got their attention Issei. He. There was an incident with him and his. Mate. Rhea's and the others widened their eyes. So, what happened? Surzich's expression darkened both Risavum Live and Lucifer and Kakabiel happened. At this point Rhea's and her peerage gasped in utter horror as Risavum is as strong as Surzich's and was the one who led the old Mao faction in the civil war. And Kakabiel was a cadre in the Grigori and one of Azazel's subordinates who survived the great war. No. Don't tell me. Rhea spoke in disbelief. Yes Rhea's. This is the tale of how Issei the famous execution dragon of judgment, the strongest heavenly dragon to exist, lost one of the most precious things to him. His dragon wife, Irvina, who was also pregnant at the time. Surziches became downcast, Grafia was the same. Rias and the others didn't know how to react. It was just like any other day in the underworld, peace had been made with help of Issei. He still had some things to clear up, and once he finished with that, Issei flew back home to his dragon cave where he and Irvina housed and lived. Begin flashback. Earth, end of devil civil war. Issei is flying back home from helping Surziches and the other Maus clean up from the war. Currently Issei is talking with dad, Drake. What a day. Issei felt exhausted. But it was son, I may be in this thing, but I'm tired just by watching. Issei chuckled. Well, take a rest then dad. I will son, thank you. It took Issei a few more minutes to get back home. He landed at the entrance of the cave, usually Irvina, a white and light blue scaled dragon, would be outside to greet him, whether in human or dragon form, however, nothing seemed right, red flags were going off inside of Issei's head. Issei brought out the boosted gear just in case. His senses were subconsciously heightened. He took a few cautious steps into his house, now it no longer felt safe. When I find Irvina, I'm going to notify her that we are going to mow. V. Issei walked around the corner and widened his eyes to see his wife in human form, pinned to the wall with cuts, lacerations, deep chunks of flesh missing, and her lifeless and dull blue eyes that stared straight at the ground. Rips and tears in her clothing were visible like she had been fighting for her life. Underneath her pinned carcass was a sentence. The sentence had been written in Irvina's own dry blood, meaning she had been up there not long after Issei left to go to Surzich's that morning. The sentence read. Greetings Red Dragon Emperor or should I call you the Execution Dragon Emperor? Hope you like the little gift we have for you, she was tough and a feisty one to kill. But, like all beings, we all succumb to exhaustion eventually, see you around. Signed. Risavum Live and Lucifer and Kakabiel. Issei exploded with a colossal amount of power and aura that was way worse than Riser's fight. Issei's power and aura grew tenfold, and his scream imbued with the highest levels of hate, rage, sadness, loss, heartbreak and insanity. Mayu meeting, two minutes earlier. So, with the old Mao faction gone, we can start to rebuild the losses we've suffered and the damages done to the environment. I agree Surziches. Ajuka nods in agreement. How are we going to deal with the temporary ceasefire with the other factions? Falbium questions. Good question, Falbium. I think sometime in the future, we should arrange a meeting with the leaders of the other factions to discuss peace options. Surziches responds. Peace would be the best option to take. Seraphol voted. Ooh um. What was that? Falbium screamed. It's Master's aura. Surziches said worried. How's he this strong? Ajuka shouted. We need to get to Issei, now. Surziches ordered. Heaven, two minutes earlier. How's things going on with the Devil's War? Michael questioned. Well, the war is over due to the help of the Execution Dragon. Uriel answered. Have no way to describe him, nor am I able to nab a pick. Same for Raphael. This is good, hopefully this means, we can soon attain peace. The only female in the angels meeting was Lady Gabriel. I agree sister. Michael nodded. Boom. What is this power? Uriel panicked in fear. It seems the wrath of the execution dragon has been provoked. Michael shouts. Brother, I think we need to descend down to the underworld. Gabriel spoke. I agree. Even though it might damage the ceasefire we have. Grigori, two minutes earlier. Azazel was in his lab doing experiments on sacred gears as always. Shem has I, pass me that hammer would you? Azazel turned and pointed to a table. Sigh. Alright. But, what do you actually need this for? Shem has I questioned. Well, I'm doing this little project and. Ooh um. 
I say. Azazel instantly knew who the aura belonged to. Azazel immediately stopped what he was doing and commanded Shemhazai. Shemhazai. Follow me, now. Shemhazai was surprised at the governor's outburst. Dragon territory, two minutes earlier. Hanan, sir. A dragon kneels to the other dragon. Hmm? Yes, what is it? Some of the female dragons have been wanting to visit the execution dragon. Hmm, I see. I guess it's alright as long as Issei is fine with it as well. Boom. Sir, ugh, what is this? It seems Issei has been triggered. I'm going to go see, Issei. Tannen teleports away. Outside. Serzichas, Ajuka, Falbium, Seraphal, Azazel, Shemhazai, Michael, Gabriel, Uriel, Raphael and Tannen were all present outside of Issei's cave. Azazel. Michael. Serzichas said. Zechas, how's things going? Azazel responds. Things have been. Difficult. Look, if you need my help with rebuilding the Devil Society then only need to ask, okay. That's great and all. But, everyone felt Issei's power surge and the pressure it exuded, right? Tannen spoke with disinterest. Right. Well, let's go in the. Serzichas got cut off when another titanic burst of aura came from the cave. Issei's scream was super loud. All of the eleven pushed up fighting against the overwhelming pressure. What is this pressure? Uriel shouted again. Somebody must have ticked his say off to such a high degree, therefore creating. This. Azazel analyzed. We just need to get to master for now. Serzichas suggested. They push on for several minutes. As they got closer and closer the pressure got worse and worse, which was really starting to take a toll on them. The pressure is strongest here, master should be right around. This. Corner. Serzichas stopped with a look of disbelief and despair as everyone followed suit. What they see is Issei holding on to the deceased Irvina in his arms while kneeling on the ground. No one dare moved a muscle. Minutes before they arrived, with Issei. Issei began to subconsciously walk to the dead and pinned woman. Issei proceeded to unpin Irvina from the wall and caught her lifeless corpse in his arms. Letting gravity do the work, Issei dropped to his knees with Irvina grasped in his embrace. How? 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 How could this happen? She did nothing wrong. Issei's tears began to fall endlessly. Minutes went by with Issei sobbing in the girl's neck. Serzichas and the rest appear. Them master, what happened? Serzichas tried to get closer, then they look at the message written in blood. So, they began reading. At the end they were disgusted. As is all more so, as Kakabiel a subordinate of his did this, and teamed up with Rissavim no less. While Issei on the other hand had his hair shadowing his upper face covering his eyes. Issei without looking away from his now dead wife and unborn child. He stood having Irvina's body slide off of his knees and onto the floor. Then Issei began to speak in a familiar chant, but different than the Juggernaut Drives chant. Issei's aura begins to violently shake the ground, even create fissures. Meanwhile at the orc. Rias and her companions were standing, with her sitting down in her club's office chair, arms posed on the mahogany desk. Rias' facial expression displayed that of seriousness and caution, this reason being there were two people wearing white robes of some sort. Everyone could feel a strong holy affinity radiating from a large object in special cloth on her back. Are you the devil that governs this town? The girl with dark blue hair questions in a serious tone. That is correct, my name is Rias Gremory, and why are two church followers here in my territory? Rias glares at the girl sitting on a couch. I am. The blue-haired girl got cut off when they hear the doors of the orc open. Okay Rias, I have had a bit of time to myself and have reconnected to my, wouldn't you believe it, dead wife. Everyone except Zenovia widened their eyes. Issei had his eyes closed the whole time. But, when he opened his eyes, he paused. Am I interrupting anything? Rias shook her head. No Issei, you're not interrupting anything. Actually, you're on time. On time for what exactly? Rias pointed at the two exorcists. These two are followers of the church and... Issei. The girl with chestnut hair launched herself at Issei who caught her. Hello Arena. Issei looked down at Arena and smiled at her. Irina started to tear up and nestled her face into Issei's chest. Issei, 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 Issei. There, there Irina. How have you been? Issei's smile did not waver. Issei, I've missed you. I've missed you so much. Irina hugged Issei a lot more tightly. Rias, being the jealous type she is was in envy at how lovey dovey Irina was being towards Issei. Issei. How do you know this girl? Irina. Issei looked at Rias. Well 10 years ago, when me and my mother moved into Cow, we became neighbors with Irina and her parents. Despite our massive age gap, Irina took to me exceedingly quickly. I remember that her father, who was an exorcist at the time, was working for the Vatican. 
Due to Irina's high affinity to the Christian religion, Taji, her father, told me and my mother that in a couple of years that they would move to Italy for Irina to become an exorcist. I told Taji that it was Irina's choice to make, which he understood. So I asked Irina in the future that did she want to be an exorcist to which she said yes. From then on, until she moved away, I would train her so she would be ready for the church. How did you train her? Riaz was intrigued and sipped a bit of tea. I put her in a life or death situation. Riaz started to have a coughing fit. Cough. Wah. Cough. At. What? Riaz coughed out. You heard me. I put her in a life or death situation. And that was. Irina looked at Riaz. He put me next to an active volcano. Riaz's soul left her body. Oh, no you don't get back here. Issei grabbed Riaz's soul before it could float away and fused it back in her body. So, Irina. Why are you here? Not that I am not happy seeing you, it's just why didn't you text me you was coming. I wanted it to be a surprise. Irina grinned. You can be happy that it did surprise me. So, why are you here? I know it's not just to say hello. Issei grinned. Wheel. Irina grew embarrassed demeanor. The blue-haired girl cut in. We are here to recover the three Excalibur fragments that were stolen from the Protestant, Vatican and Orthodox churches. May I know your name? Issei looked at the girl who was still sitting down. Zenovia, Zenovia Corda. Ah, yes you're the girl that Griselda took in. Zenovia gained a pale look on her face. Why you know Lady Griselda? Zenovia tried to regain her composure. Yes, I do in fact. As a favor to Michael, he wanted me to train Griselda in everything. Ranging from CQC, swordsmanship, magic and even long rang combat. Zenovia was thrown for a loop. No wonder why she is the way she is in training. Oh? What is she like? She is a training fanatic. She pushed me to my absolute limits. Issei's grin grew wider. Trust me that is like a baby trying to walk type training. If it were me I would push you too near the limits of death. Zenovia gulped. It would be near impossible to be compassed now. Hey anyway. T the culprit who stole the swords. Is Kakabiel. Issei grin fell immediately. Riaz and those who know of his past look towards Issei. And he is in this town. Zenovia continued. Flashbacks repeated in his mind. Issei. Riaz grew concerned. The low bellowing growl was resounding from Issei. The Kabiel is in town. I'm going to slaughter his very existence. Irina was confused. Issei never told her of his past so she doesn't know. Erm, why is Issei so angry? Long story. Riaz said. I hope that you won't get in the way this is business for the church and we require you to not intervene. Do you think that we would side with the fallen? Riaz became annoyed. While the church did say that too could be a possibility, we want to be sure. Zenovia stared at Riaz with a blank expression. While well, Riaz narrowed her eyes. You accuse me that I would stain my family's name? Riaz stood up flaring a bit of her aura. None of the sort. I'm merely stating that you say out of our way. We will stay out of yours. Then Zenovia got up from the couch. Now with our business has concluded, we will be leaving. Come on Arena. Zenovia stopped near Asia and looked at her. Are you the witch, Asia Argento? Asia flinched when Zenovia said witch. Why yes. When I first stepped foot in here. At first, I didn't recognize you. However, being here for a while the more and more, I was reminded. But to stoop so low as to become a devil, do you even still believe in God? Zenovia stared at Asia intently. Issei in his own self-rage heard and started to direct that hate and anger towards Zenovia. Zenovia. What are you saying, there's no way she still believes in God. Irina looks at Zenovia. I've never been able to stray from the teachings of God. Asia spoke passionately and passively. Then I shall cut you down in the name of our God. Zenovia reached for the object on her back. Zenovia was about to swing her large sword downwards. However, before she even got halfway down. She was grabbed by the wrist. I wouldn't do that if I was you. Issei's deep voice bellowed out threateningly. Everyone looked towards Issei and the stern yet pissed off face. Eyes glowing with fury, teeth sharpened to the point. Asia stood behind Issei for safety and protection. You okay, Asia? Issei tilted his head to Asia. Dust scared is all. Asia looked up into Issei's entrancing eyes. Nodding his head. Issei looked towards Zenovia and with an emotionless tone. Apologize. Why should I? She's a witch, a heretic turned devil. By rights, I should grant her mercy. Zenovia said. This ticked off Issei to a very high degree. Inside the boosted gear. Yufufufu, looks like the girl's done it now. Irvina giggles. Indeed, people who piss off my son are either never the same again or just 50 feet into the ground. I'm sure you already know as you've seen that plenty of times. Drag spoke with amusement. Back with the orc. Alright, if you want to play it the hard way that's fine by me, I think it's time I give you a brutal lesson. Issei spoke in an ominous tone. 
good, I'll take part as well. Kiba spoke up, he had been eyeing the Excaliburs since they arrived with hate and rage. And? Who are you? Zenobia narrowed her eyes at Kiba. I am your senior, but apparently I was deemed a failure. Kiba glared at the blade in Zenobia's hand. No Kiba, you are not in the right state of mind to fight. Issei glanced over his shoulder to stare at Kiba. Kiba glared at Issei, who in turn glared right back. I will have my vengeance and avenge those who helped me escape. One way. Or another. Kiba's eyes screamed bloody murder. Really, and what of the family, you and they went through? Issei narrowed his eyes. Both Riaz and Kiba widened their eyes. How do you do know of the project? Kiba materialized a sword and swung it at Issei. Issei. Riaz shouted out in worry. Issei, however never moved, blocked nor evaded. Think crack break clang. Kiba widened his eyes. Seconds pass and he becomes even more enraged. Kiba started to create more swords with many different attributes. Yet just like the first blade they all broke leaving Kiba an exhausted and panting mess with sweat. Issei stood still with a disappointed and annoyed expression. Kiba. Rias shouts angrily. Issei lets go of Zenovia's wrist and holds his hand to Rias. Rias, let him vent. He's held the anger in for too long. That's why I stood and took the hits. Issei looks at Rias with a warm gaze. Rias took a deep breath in and okay. She then sat back down in her chair. You finished. Issei whipped his head back at Kiba and returning his stern and serious face. And no, never pant will be pant done. Not until pant I achieve pant my vengeance for pant those who sacrificed their lives for pant mine. Hmm, I see. Then what after that? What after you achieve, that is if you achieve your desire for revenge. After all, Riaz will be forced to label you as a stray, and we both know how painful that will be for her. It will also have to be, most likely Riaz or Sona, that puts you down like the rabid animal or devil in this case, will become. Issei closed the distance. They who sacrificed themselves for you would have been for nothing. They would have died in vain. Imagine the pain, the tormented faces, the tears that they shed, the screams of the ones that helped you escape, instead of a free-for-all to survive. Issei's serious and stern look turned to a savage and menacing grin. And don't get me started with the satisfaction of destroying the fragments. That happiness will not last, plus the fragments can be rebuilt, so that effort will be a waste of time and energy. However, I do know the man that led behind the scenes of the project. Issei switched back to his serious and stern form. Don't talk about them. Kiba began crying as he summoned another sword and swung at Issei once again, and like the rest it shattered, Kiba lost his grip, and the hilt slid out of his hands. Kiba fell to his knees in despair. As I was saying, your family that endured the torture gave their lives, so you could live. And you're just going to throw that away. Grow up, Kiba and think. Issei bent over to Kiba while still standing with both index and middle fingers on his temples. I'll deal with Kiba later. For now. Issei set his sights back on Zenovia, who sweat dropped. Allow me to. Educate you. Issei cracked his knuckles with a vicious shit-eating grin. Bang. Zenovia sent through the wall to the outside. Zenovia bounced on the ground due to the speed at which she was launched at. Issei is in a thrown stance like he had threw a ball. Everyone behind him had faces of shock. Issei leaped out of the hole and dropped down to the grass. All the while, Zenovia struggled to steady herself and into a fighting stance. Lesson 1. Issei spoke and vanished before reappearing. Never instigate a fight you can't win. Otherwise it will lead you to your death. Issei sucker punched Zenovia in the gut hard, with enough force to send her in the air, vomit blood and winding the exorcist, all the while holding back a substantial amount. Lesson 2. Issei appeared above Zenovia. Issei said. Don't underestimate or overestimate who you are fighting provoking. Before clasping his hands together and swings downwards, hitting her in the back and sending her into the ground. Zenovia impacted the ground, creating a large crater. When the dust cleared, Zenovia could be seen suffocating on her own blood. But luckily or unluckily, Issei healed her. Just to be punched in the face and send grinding in the grass once again. Lesson 3. Issei sped to Zenovia. Don't discriminate others. Asia didn't know the person she healed was a devil. Oh, and I know the devil that she healed and what his intentions were. Asia widened her eyes. Issei? What do you mean? Asia said with surprise. Asia? The devil you healed was the younger brother of Ajuka Beelzebub. Rias widened her eyes. Wait. Diadora. As in Diodora Astra that keeps to himself. Riaz said. Yes, him. Issei stood over the beaten and bloody Zenovia. But. He's kind and friendly. Riaz stood confused. Issei began to laugh which creeped everyone out. That's exactly just what he wants you to see. However, that is a facade. What he doesn't want anyone to see, even his parents and brother, is that he has a nun fetish. A bad one at that. Issei stared darkly at the group. H how do you know this? 
Rias felt shivers going down her spine. Michael hired me to find out why a bunch of holy maidens were being excommunicated randomly throughout the globe. Within the past 10 years, 15 holy maidens had to be excommunicated. One of them being Eurasia. However, at the time that we met in Italy, I was on a mission. Asia took a few steps back and fell onto her ass as she started to recall the events. Flashback. Italy Vatican. Like I said. A year ago, I was tasked by Michael to uncover why over the past decade, holy maidens were getting excommunicated randomly and went missing straight after their excommunication. So, I had to track down why the maidens were getting excommunicated. I pinpointed that a single individual was responsible. However, I also tracked him down, as well as the next target to be excommunicated. Issei had tracked the next target to Italy, so he teleported to Vatican City. As he exited the circle within an alley with a black cloak to blend in with the shadows, he sensed a demonic energy signature within the vicinity and followed it. Time skipped few minutes later. Issei made his way closer and closer to the energy. Closer he got the more evil intent he could feel from it. His aura has developed a sort of sentience over the past five centuries, and it has gained a symbiotic relationship with Issei. As it became more and more aware of its surroundings the more it wanted to right the wrongs that disgraceful people have done. And this was no different. Like a child guiding his or her parent, the aura was guiding Issei. Wherever the aura tug, Issei followed. When he got to the church the thing he sees is a young Asia enjoying the fresh air. Issei immediately put the dots together. This girl is the target. Oh, how he just wanted to get her away from this church shit. But, he has a job to do, he needs to use her as bait, and that does not sit right with him at all. Wait, you had to use Asia as bait. Rhea's voice was said. Yes, I had to, otherwise I would have made myself known, unwillingly. Sorry for using you Asia. Issei responded. No, it's fine Issei, I forgive you. Issei kept his distance and reeled in his aura. However, Asia came closer. Oh, hello. Asia grinned happily and joyfully. Issei not wanting to be rude spoke. Hello, their little girl. I'm Asia, what is your name? Asia's energetic personality made Issei chuckle. P, hey, didn't your parents ever tell you not to talk to people you don't know? Um, I don't have parents. Asia's mood sullied for a moment. I'm sorry, that was insensitive of me. I don't mind, I was raised by the church. Asia cutely smiled. Well, it's nice to meet you Asia. Issei smiled under his cloak. I've got to go now, hopefully we will meet here again sometime. Asia smiled and started to leave and waved at Issei. Issei waved back at her. Issei's face went stoic and serious. Now, I just have to sit and wait. Issei watched Asia pass a corner. Issei then jumped to the rooftops. Time skip. Issei was running along the rooftops undetected while keeping an eye on the young Asia. Asia had made her way back to the church after doing a few errands. Issei felt relief seeing her enter the church. Even so, Issei didn't move from his position. He waited and waited and waited. For hours felt like months. However, after waiting for so long, Issei caught a glimpse of a dark green haired man in a cloak that was just as dark green as his hair approached the church grounds. Issei narrowed his eyes. This person's aura was demonic in nature. Staring at the person intently. Issei witnessed, the person reached in and pulled out a blade. A second later. He plunged the blade into his torso, then dragged it down from his left shoulder to his right hip. He made the blade dematerialize, then he slumped to the floor. Issei gained a face of disgust and unbridled anger. But, Issei needed to not lose control of his emotions, because one wrong move could cost him this mission, and maybe more. Issei only had to wait a few more minutes before Asia came out of the church doors and ran up to the devil. Issei also caught a fellow church member spying on the two of them around the corner. Asia healed the devil, and said devil stood up and opened his devil wings, to put, Asia was shocked was an understatement. The devil then took off and flew away. While this happened Issei also saw the church member ran away to tell the pope. But, that was the least of his worries. For right now he needed to follow the, the devil. Issei silently unfolded his wings and flew after him. Time skip, back alley. Issei saw the devil enter an alleyway, but didn't follow through. Instead, he thought of an ingenious idea. Issei decided to to cloak himself with an invisibility spell. After the spell was applied he made his way through the alleyway and caught up to the devil. Whatever he was doing it was not good. The cloaked figure said. Oh, Asia and now that you are going to be excommunicated, you will be all mine to do with as I please. But, now I must tend to my needs. Issei couldn't see, but he could feel a devilish and evil smile. The figure opened up a green magic circle. Using his quick thinking Issei cast an undetectable tracking spell on the figure's back before he could fully teleport away. Well, what did you do then? Rhea's curiosity got the better of her. I searched for the tracker I put on him. Which was where? 
the Astareth territory, specifically the Astareth mansion. Bragg spoke up with disdain in his mouth. Son, if I know who I think it is, or at the very least related to, then this person has a deep and dark secret which we are about to uncover, and it is not going to be pleasant. I agree with you father. Whenever I look at him, all I feel is hatred, anguish, disgust and disdain. His position is in the Astareth mansion, which makes me think he is an Astareth. We will spy on him and see what he does, and hopefully or hopefully not, we can get some evidence material just in case we need it. That idea. Issei then made a magic circle of his own and teleported to the mansion. What did you see, when you got to the mansion? Everything on so many levels of wrong. That's what I saw. Just thinking about it makes me want to keel over and vomit my intestines out. Issei said disgusted. It's that bad. Rhea said with surprise. Worse than you could ever imagine. Issei spoke in anger. Underworld, Astareth Mansion. Issei appeared out of his magic circle and immediately sensed multiple fallen angel auras or what it felt like. Fallen angels. No, they weren't fallen angels. Think of it like this. An angel is holy in nature, right? Rias nodded. When said angel falls that holy aura and energy gets tainted of sorts. Issei started. Humans naturally have a holy factor like angels as well. However, when specific individuals have an absurd amount of that holy factor they are then made into holy maidens. Issei explained. Now tell me. What would happen to a holy maiden if they were to become a devil? Rias and everyone thought about it for a while until it clicked. Their aura becomes tainted like a fallen angel's. Rias said. Bingo. So, then that means. Rias gained a look of horror. Exactly. Issei's face and tone darkened. Issei then used his wings to propel himself up into the air and glided over to a window closest to the tracker signal. Upon coming up to the window, Issei's face quickly turned green and keeled over to puke. In the room, Issei could see the man to now be revealed as Diodora Astareth having fun with multiple different girls in a not so pleasurable and ultimately enjoyable way, instead quite the opposite. Some of the girls are not even of age. One that seemed to be the oldest amongst the other girls, looked like she was no longer among the living, yet she was clearly breathing, however her breathing was erratic like she was panicking. Diodora was harshly whipping, cutting, beating and clearly raping the girls. They couldn't even fight back. Some wept and others remained stoic and expressionless, like they had gone through this a hundred times. They were simply broken to such a degree that the expressionless don't even try to fight back, unlike the more emotive ones. The girls that do try to fight, thrash, slap, struggle and kick against Diodora, however then they get an even worse beating. Not even Issei's sadistic side could take this. Inside the mansion. Yeah, that's right bitch, you're mine and you all belong to me, no one else. Diodora said while whipping a blonde with blue eyes. Be please. S stop. Why why your H hurting MMME. One of the girls spoke while crying in pain. No, you are mine and I will do with you as I please. Just like a new member that's joining soon. Diodora evilly grinned. The girls that showed more emotion widened their eyes in fear for the new member. W W what? A girl with pale red hair looked at Diodora with fear. Ugh. Do I have to spell it out for you? You useless piece of worthless shit. You all are going to get a new housemate. Diodora spoke with annoyance and proceeded to beat another girl this time with light brown hair. Outside. Issei's anger was raising with every passing second, and the hate towards Diodora grew with every whip, punch kick and forceful thrust on the girls. Fuck it. I'm going in. Bragg was just as pissed off. I've got your back, son. Let's show this fucking devil bastard a what for. Welsh dragon. Balance breaker. Issei dawned in his red dragonic armor smashed straight through the window and rocketed towards Diodora, who was still trying to acknowledge what was happening. Issei grabbed Diodora by the throat and took him with. I throwing him though the ceiling and into the air. Diodora screamed in pain. Issei kneed Diodora in the spine and proceeded to punch his face into the ground. Boom. The impact made a large crater with Issei hovering above it. Diodora, however. I am severely disgusted by you Diodora. Imagine what your brother would feel if he were to find out about this. Issei said with a threatening and aggressive tone. He, and what makes you think that red dragon? Diodora slowly got back up despite the pain. As of right now. Diodora asked her if you are under arrest for numerous amounts of cases to do with excommunication of the holy maidens throughout the past 10 years and jeopardizing the temporary ceasefire between the angel and the devil factions. And to add to the fact that you own an illegal peerage. I also witnessed and recorded the past events that have transpired. So, I say again. Diodor Astareth, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say, will and can be used against you in the court of devil law, if you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed to you by the devil faction. Do you understand those rights that I have given you? Issei spoke professionally and not letting his emotions get in the way. 
RRRGGGHH. Diodora growled. Do you understand these rights I have given you? Issei narrowed his eyes in anticipation and spoke more threateningly. Diodora sighed. Yes, fine. I concede. Good. Issei went behind Diodora and cuffed him via his aura. Time to call Surziches. Issei summoned a magic circle to his ear. You called my brother? Yep. Ruffling in the background. Hello. Hello Surziches. Issei spoke in a friendly tone. Oh, Issei. How are you? Doing well. But, now's not the time for that. We have business. Issei switched to a more stern and professional tone that some like to call business mode. What is it then Issei? Surziches responded equally as serious. Come to my position and see for yourself. Issei said looking at Diodora. Alright, we'll be there in five. The call disconnected. Time skip five minutes later. Surziches came through a magic circle and looked at Issei. So, what business do we have? Arrest business. Who are we arresting? Issei pointed over to Diodora who was behind Surziches. Surziches turned around. Diodora. Do you know what a duke is going to be like when he hears about this? Issei looked at Surziches and said. Yes, I do. So, what led you to arresting him? I then proceeded to explain to him that I was tasked by Michael that over the decade, numerous amounts of holy maidens were getting excommunicated and going missing. And tracked down the one responsible. I see. So, Diodora was the one causing all of these excommunications then. Yes. All I need you to do is stay here and guard him while I look for his illegal peerage. Surzich's eyebrow rose at that. Illegal peerage? Yes, Diodora acquired his pieces illegally. So this in itself cannot be overlooked. Issei went into the mansion. Inside. Issei entered the mansion's bedroom and saw all of the female peerage huddled up and cowering in a corner. He could clearly see that they had been put through the ringer. Issei deactivated his balance breaker and spoke in a calm and soothing tone. Hey, hey. It's okay. I'm not going to hurt you. I've come to see how you are all doing. Issei said with a smile on his face. The girls who were covered in different types of fluids relaxed a bit and started to calm down. Is? Is he gone? The blonde-haired girl, who was bleeding all over her body due to the deep cuts Diodora made on her. Issei slowly made his way over as to not startle them. Please can you all tell me your names? The pale retreat said. Ro Rosaline. Rosaline? That's a nice name. Issei smiled warmly. Issei turned to a light blue-haired girl. What about you? What is yours? Mine? Charlotte. The blunette girl said while huddling the another girl for safety. Charlotte. You have nothing to fear from me. Why did you save us? Do you want us to repay you with our bodies? The silver-haired girl that was supposedly the oldest spoke emotionlessly. The other girls flinched. No, nothing of the sort. You all have been treated wrongfully in one of the worst ways possible. Issei sat near them. But to answer your question. I am here because I was tasked to find out by Michael why over this decade multiple holy maidens were having to be excommunicated and after went missing. And I pinpointed that a holy maiden by the name of Asia Argento was the next target. Issei showed a hologram of Asia. She looked so innocent. The silver-haired girl stared at Asia's hologram. Given the amount of aura you give off, I'd say you are the queen piece. Yes, I am master's queen. Oh, that's not going to do. We are going to get that master servant thing out of your head. From this day forth none of you girls are Diodora's playthings. Issei stood back up. Issei put his hand forward and the girls thought he was going to hurt them. What are you doing? I'm going to say this now. This is going to hurt. Do it dad. Issei gave his father the signal. Purge. Dragonification. Purify. Drag roared out. All of the girls started to glow and scream in pain. Seconds later, their pieces fell to the floor. What? Just happened. My. My body. It feels different. Especially down here. The silver-haired girl said with a bit of emotion and checked her body. That's because you all are dragons now. Me and my father have repaired your vaginal walls, therefore you all are now virgins once again. All of you are able to pick and choose who you all deem worthy. Everyone even the silver-haired girl widened her eyes in shock. Thank you, thank you, a million times thank you. Every one of them said in unison as they all bombarded Issei with hugs. Issei internally started to hyperventilate, but tried to contain it as this was a time for their recovery. But it's fine, girls. Happy to help. Issei strained a smile. What is your name? The silver-haired girl said. Issei, Issei why gotch hi do? Issei. My name's Abigail. The silver-haired girl now known as Abigail said. Nice to meet you Abigail. My. My name's Mia. One of the blonde girls said. I'm Olivia. The brunette spoke after. Layla. A green-haired girl spoke from behind. Time skipped two minutes later. Everyone else told Issei of their names. 
Issei headed towards Serzich's with the girls. Issei. Took you long enough. Serzich's smiled. Sorry about that had to calm these girls down, revert their body's physical condition, change their anatomy, and get to know them, you how it is. Issei hugged all of the girls as support. Seeing Diadora on the floor beaten and bruised filled them with relief. What is going to happen to him? Abigail spoke emotionlessly looking at Diadora. He's going to be taken to court, as it's more of a private matter, this will not be known to the public. And of course, all of you can attend, if you want to that is. Oh, and also the broadcast is going to be connected to heaven as well for Michael and the other Saras to view as you were their devout followers. They all nodded. We all would love to see that disgusting green-haired schmuck behind bars. Well, as all of you are victims of his debauchery, you all can give information for the jury to decide. Flashback end. Did Diodora get done for the crimes he committed? Riaz said. Yes, he did. He got put in a high-security penitentiary. However. Issei went dark and annoyed. However. Riaz pushed. However, not long after he was sentenced to the prison, he escaped. Issei's eyes glowed their respective eye colors. What? Everyone shouted. HMPH. A group of terrorists helped him escape, turns out, the group was the old Satan faction. Riaz and the others even Arena and Zenovia, widened their eyes in surprise. DT the old S Satan F faction. Ria started to sweat. Yes. And ever since then no one has been able to track down Diodora. Well, that's the lesson and story time over. I need to get back home, see your ears. Issei healed Zenovia and walked towards Ria's. He pulled her in by her waist and kissed her on the lips passionately and walked away while waving back at her, who had a full-blown red face that was as red as her hair. I need to say that the White Dragon Emperor has awoken. Zenovia shouted. Ah, you mean Vali. I'm the one who trained her, so of course she has awoken, she has been for over 11 years. Everyone went slack-jawed. What? What about the girls what happened to them? Asia said innocently. You wouldn't believe it. They wanted to show their appreciation for me saving them, so they volunteered to be my maids willingly. I refused because I didn't want them to think that they needed to repay me. However. They insisted, knowing I couldn't win against them, I relented. Suo, they stay at your house. Ria's questioned. But they do, Ria's. Do you think we could see them? Asia asked with an innocent face. Sure, I'll need to let them decide, it's their choice after all. Asia nodded. Issei left shortly after. Time skip, Issei's house. Issei opened the front of the door, and he was welcomed by the 14 girls in made attire. Welcome back master. Abigail spoke. Hello, all of you. I've got a question for you all. Let's take a seat on in the lounge. Issei motioned over to a set of doors which must be the living room. Issei and the others walked in and sat down. What do you need to talk to us about master? I wanted to ask if it is alright if after the events with Kakabiel, that my friends and allies can come over here. That is fine, master. But, why are you trying to get permission from us? Abigail looked quizzically at Issei. Well, it's because it concerns you girls. What do you mean? You remember Asia. The girl that was excommunicated like all you. They all nod. Well, Ria's Gremory, who is Serzich's little sister took her in after she arrived in Kuo. So, she's also a devil. Yes, however, Ria's family treats their servants with love, respect and kindness. They all wanted to see you all. Okay, we will allow it. But, did you tell them, how we got here? Yes, I told them. Asia couldn't remember who she healed. So, I told them it was Diodora. And what he did to all of you. All the girls became downcast at the memory. Issei hugged them all to cheer them up. Issei without realizing made them blush a deep crimson. After the one-sided beating and the long story. Fibba had awoken on the sofa in the orc from being knocked out by Issei. Fibba looked around and quickly came to the assumption that both Issei and the exorcist had concluded their differences. I'll be going. Kibba said in a brooding mood. Fibba. Where are you going? Rhea shouted to Kibba in worry. I'm going to clear my head. Issei was right. Those who gave their life for me to live. I can't throw that away. But, I must at the very least avenge them, I simply cannot let my family die in vain. Kibba sighed. I know, I can't persuade you, so we will help you. Ria said with a smile. President. Kibba grew surprised. But nothing, Kibba. Issei has opened our eyes. And now we are going to use them properly. Ria shot down Kibba any chance of speaking. Thank you. Kibba became grateful. Don't thank us, thank Issei. Kibba nodded. Time skip, next day. Issei is seen walking around the town. As he does so he spots the two exorcists sitting and begging for cash. Knowing Arena, he had a guess. He strode up to the two and spoke. So. What is it this time Arena? Oh. Hi Issei. Arena responded cheerfully. The Irenea. Issei pushed. 
Irina grew embarrassed well. She brought a painting of a fake saint. Zenobia looked at Issei with a stoic face. It is not. I'm pretty sure Saint Peter always looked like this. Irina fired back while holding the painting. Just right Irina. That ain't Saint Peter. Issei supported Zenobia. Muo, Mini. Irina pouted. Don't give me that Irina, I know you and your impulsive personality. You knew something like this would happen. Zenobia rose an eyebrow. You could say that, Irina being the devoted Christian she is, her impulsiveness spells trouble. Come I'll buy you some food. Issei smiled at the two of them. I'm Skip, random restaurant. Issei sits opposite Zenobia and Irina while they stuff their stomachs with food. So, Zenobia. If you need help in tracking the holy swords you could ask me. I could sniff those holy swords better than anyone. That and I sense their aura as of right now. Zenobia and Irina immediately widened their eyes. What? Both of them said in unison. Well, considering that I'm a dragon, my senses are hundreds of times stronger than that of irregular humans. Well, where are the swords then? Zenobia stood up. Calm down, don't do anything rash. We need those swords. Sci so fine, alright. The swords. Or at least one of the is out in the open, where me, Rias and her peerage killed a stray devil. It was me that did most of the killing. But, the sword is up on the hill there. Issei pointed to the large sloped hill, at the hill was the large white house that Issei and Rias group encountered the stray visor. The other two are underground, most likely with Kakabiel. Issei said as he sensed his surroundings. Well, what are we waiting for let's go and get those swords back. Irina spoke determined. Wait, Irina. Think about the risks before barging and charging in. Issei scolded. Haha, uh -huh, right. Irina said embarrassed. I'll call some backup. Issei brought out his phone. His phone rang, and the other side picked up. Yes. Ria said with labored breath. Hello Ria's. Issei. W-Y are you calling me? Ria sounded surprised. The church girls and I are currently in a restaurant north of the Orc, and we were talking about some things. However I can sense three holy swords in the town as of current. I'll be there in five minutes. Ria sounded like she was rushing. Ria's, are you alright, you sound out of breath. I'm fine, Issei. Just a bit exhausted. See you in five minutes. Issei then hung up the phone. That was weird. Issei shrugged. Ria's will be here in less than five minutes. Alright then. Zenobia said stuffed. They waited for Ria's and her peerage to arrive. Time skip, five minutes later. Ria's and her peerage arrived came through the doors of the restaurant. So, Issei. What have you called us for? Ria said with curiosity. First. Sit. Issei stood up and went over to a tuck chair and pulled it out and gestured Ria's to sit. Ara, Ara. Issei, how gentlemanly of you. Akeno spoke in a seductive voice. Well, I do try. Issei bowed slightly. Ria's took her seat with a blush on her face. And Issei sat in his. So? What is it? I've detected the Excaliburs. Issei said with seriousness. Ria's and the others except Zenovia and Arena were shocked. How? And? Where? My senses and aura. One of the Excaliburs is at the top of the hill where we, or I slaughtered Visor. The other two are underground, mostly likely with Kakabiel. Issei closed his eyes. Issei spread his aura around the town. The Excalibur that is at the top of the hill is Excalibur rapidly, the other two are nightmare and transparency. Well, let's go then. Saji shouted enthusiastically. Well that excitement, Saji. This is a mission where you could die. Issei bore into Saji's eyes. Everyone looked directly at Saji, who lowered his head in shame. So, what's the plan? Sona spoke up. There is no plan. Issei bluntly said. What? How can there be no plan? Sona said. There is no plan. Because there can't be one, at the moment our enemy or enemies I should say are as of this moment, unpredictable. If we made a plan a certain way, we cannot be sure the enemy will fall into it. Okay, you have a point. Sona sighed. But, that doesn't mean we can be arrogant. We need to play it safe. Everyone then nodded. So, what's going to happen is, all of you. Issei pointed to Ria's, Sona and their peerages. All of you are going to go home and do what you do naturally. At 9.30 pm meet me, Irina and Zenovia at this place. Issei jotted down a set of coordinates. After that they all left, leaving only the dragon and two exorcists. You two are coming with me. Issei looked over to both Irina and Zenovia. How come? Zenovia tilted her head. Simple. Because of a certain someone. Issei looked over to Irina. That blew all of your currency. You have nowhere else to go, and I won't take no for an answer. Issei stood up. Come. Issei started to walk to the doors. Irina and Zenovia followed suit. Time skip, 9.30 pm. Issei was leaning on a tree with Irina and Zenovia sitting on the grass beside him. How much Luangjir? Irina emphasized. 
Not much arena. Issei looked at his watch. Sheen. The grimmery circle spawned on the ground and lit up the surroundings, with Ria's and her group appearing out of it. Okay Issei, we are all here. Ria spoke. Good. I have but one rule, while all of you are under my supervision. No one, and I mean absolutely no one that includes the both of you. Issei stared at Arena and Zenobia. Are to wander off, leave my side and or go after the culprits by any means. Do. I make. Myself. Crystal. Clear. Every last one of the member nodded their heads furiously. The reason why I pointed you two out specifically. Issei looked at Arena and Zenobia again. Is because you Arena are too naive and can be swayed way too easily. Zenobia, you are too impulsive and that impulsiveness will be what kills you and probably Arena as well. So, I am saying this to the both of you more so than the others, because I have a feeling that if the enemy flees then you, Zenobia will give chase impulsively, and Arena will follow blindly. Rias and Sona with their peerages look at Issei with stupefied faces. We have a job to do, come. Issei started to walk the way to the high-class building, with the others coming out of their days and followed shortly after. Time skip, five minutes later. Alright we are dot Issei was interrupted. The Ayahu. Freed jumped down from atop of the building. Well, well, well. What do we have here? Some shitty devils have come to dot Freed looked over to Issei. And who are you? Another shitty devil, I suppose. Freed began to smile psychotically. Hmm. I see, so this is the guy that was supposedly killed by my clones that day. If that is so, then how is he still alive? Issei muttered. Doesn't matter. Issei came out of his musings. Issei? Issei looked over to the voice. Just thinking, Rias. Oh, come on. What little question waits for an answer? Freed started to get irritated. You'd be respectful to wait your turn to speak, Freed. Issei bore into Freed's gaze. Freed shivered at the glare. To answer your question. Two words. Freed began to sweat in unease. Balance break. Freed stumbled backwards. Welsh dragon balance breaker Drake called out within the gear. In seconds, Issei donned his armor. Why 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 yo oh you are, t t t h e d d d r r ag gone. Freed became a terrified stuttering mess. You know this person, Freed. A man who was both old and obese spoke coming out of the building. Old man Valper, this is the one I was telling you about. Somehow, this guy had dozens of himself. Freed spoke to the man. Kibba glared at the old man with furious rage. Valper Galilee. Valper looked at Kibba. The one and only. Valper then looked at the armor clad to say. Hmm, I see. So, this must be the one and only boosted gear wielder I have heard so much about. Oh? And what has been said? Issei looked over to Valper. Many things. Some call you the Red Dragon Emperor, others call you the Execution Emperor or Dragon, and then there's the Third Heavenly Dragon or the Strongest Heavenly Dragon. But I like the one which our boss gave you. Issei rose an eyebrow. And what is that? The Dragon of Death and Demise. Hmm, I like that name. It complements my job and title. Issei puffed out his chest in pride. Everyone next to Issei rolled their eyes. So, who is your boss? Issei said. More than likely that bastard, Kakabiel. And why would I tell you that? Valper smirked. Because whether you tell us or not, your boss will show himself either way. Eh, uh, I must admit. You have smarts, I'll give you that. But, as to why I am not telling, is for that to be a secret. Valper pulled an unsettling smirk. HMPH, fine by me. Issei shrugged. Kibba you can handle Freed as a way to quell that growing anger of yours. Immediately after those words were spoken, Kibba launched himself at the insane ex-exorcist. Issei? Why did you let Kibba fight him? Rhea said with an irritated tone. Simple, I'm helping him. Issei stared at the two sword wielders fight. How is that helping him? Rhea said. You wouldn't know Rhea's because you never even tried to help him. Hell. You didn't even try to help heal any of your team's personal problems and past experiences. Leaving them to wallow in despair with it ever growing. Issei continued to keep staring at Kiba fighting Freed. Ibu but dot Riaz begins to get nervous. But. Nothing, Riaz. Issei sharply spun his towards Riaz as his helmet unfolded. You left them calling out to you for help, yet you never did anything to save them from their depression. You, who was constantly thinking on how to get out of your marriage. You didn't even try to help yourself when you learned of the arrangement. You never trained, you never trained them either. The only thing that you did was sit on your ass hoping that you could get a strong peerage member to get you out of the engagement. Riaz was crying at the end. Akeno and Kaneko both felt bad for her, yet at the same time they also came to a sudden realization. Did you have to do that Issei? Sona spoke pushing her glasses up with her middle finger. Had to be said. She needs a reality check. Issei proceeded to turn back to Kiba and Freed. Kiba looked worn out, while Freed on the other hand was practically fine. That's enough Kiba. 
Issei started to walk towards Kiba. No. I still need my revenge. Kiba shouted in rage. It's I fine, you leave me with no choice. Issei's helmet folded back concealing his face. Issei with a slight lean forward, disappeared within a blink of an eye. Everyone including Freed looked around to see where Issei was. Only to be hearing a thump colliding with the ground. Everyone looked to where the sound came from, only to see Issei holding an unconscious Kiba in a bridal style carry. Issei took Kiba over to Ria's and the others. This wouldn't have had to come to this, if you just helped them out, Ria's. Issei planted Kiba down next to the others. While Ria's lowered her head in shame. You two, you're up. Issei looked at the church duo. Irina and Zenovia nodded. Greed Selzin, for the actions against the church and all the innocents you have killed, your judgment is death. Zenovia grabbed a hold of Excalibur Destruction and pulled it off her back and aimed it at Freed. Hahaha. <laughs> so, the two church bitches come to face me. Freed laughed maniacally. It was then Valper spoke up. Too late Freed, boss wants us to retreat. You'll get your chance. Fuck. Freed screamed in anger at being denied his fun. Whatever, no matter. I will see you all, when we can. But, for now we must leave. See ya, shitty devils. Freed took out a smoke pellet and threw it to the ground. After th. Zenovia felt a shiver go down her spine. What did I say about chasing after them? Issei's eyes turned hard and cold. Making everyone shiver. But. Zenovia tried to retort. Definition of tried. I said to not play cat and mouse, and what were you about to do? Go and play cat and mouse. Issei walked up to the two exorcists, with every word gaining more and more frustration and anger. Zenovia and Arena flinch in fear. While the other spectators felt pity. The both of you are going to go back to the house and think about your actions. Issei looked over to the Gremory and Citri groups. And all of you are to also return to your homes, effective immediately. But that Ria's and her peerage took the unconscious Kiba and transported through the Gremory circle. Sona and her peerage looked at Issei. What? Issei shrugged. Nothing. Sona and her peerage left straight after. Sai dad, sometimes I don't know why I do this. Everyone has a reason for why they do things. For you, it's because of your caring and selfless nature. Even though, we as dragons are naturally selfish, there are those that are like you, which are very rare and unique to come across or even to exist. Drag felt proud of his son. I guess. Issei said as he released his wings. Arena and Zenovia took in his magnificent dragon scales. Issei grabbed both Arena and Zenovia, which lead to them being both on his back, and flew back home as they screamed, because of the speeds. Issei's house. It only took Issei three minutes to fly to his house with Arena and Zenovia on his back. He slowed down his pace, which came to a halt at the front of the set of doors to his house. Alright, when you go in. I must warn you. Not to you too, but as a warning. The girls that I house here are under my protection. If I see any, and I mean any weapons drawn at them. I will kick the both of you out. They mean no harm. Have I made my point clear? Issei only locked eyes with the door, not moving. Yes. We understand perfectly. Zenovia spoke confidently with Irina giving a reassuring nod. Good. Issei proceeded to walk up to and open the doors. Welcome back, master. All of the ex-holy maidens in maid get up welcome to say. Good evening girls. How are all of you holding up after I left? Irina and Zenovia gained expressions of shock and disbelief. We are doing well master. Rosaline gleamed in happiness. That is good to hear Issei smiled. Who are they master? Abigail pointed at the two exorcists to which the other girls in maid attire also looked to where she was looking. Issei walked over to Irina and Zenovia and put his hands on both of each other's shoulders. This is Irina, a friend of mine who I met when I first arrived in Cow with my mother. Issei tapped on Irina's right shoulder, who was on his right. And this is Zenovia, Irina's partner. She's a bit thick-headed though. Tapping Zenovia's left shoulder, who was on his left. Zenovia however, frowned at Issei. Issei just smirked. I see, they're both exorcists. Abigail said a bit wary. You have nothing to fear. They won't hurt or harm you. I've made sure of that. That's a relief. The other maid girls released the tenseness within their bodies. So, what are they here for? Abigail looked at the two. They are here because. This numbskull spent all of their money, which the Vatican Church gave them, on an unofficial painting of Saint Peter. Issei brought out the wretched painting. All of the maids stared at the painting with a deadpan expression. Looking over to Irina then back at the painting, then up to Issei. You're joking right? Issei with also a deadpan face. Not in the slightest. That looks nothing like Saint Peter. Charlotte screamed in disbelief and anger. I have to agree. Rosaline said. As do I. Mia nodded. That's what I said. Zenovia spoke up. I told Irina that it looks nothing like Saint Peter. Yet, she insisted that it was. So, infuriating. 
All the girls in maid attire gave Zenobia a hug, to which she appreciated. Thanks. You're welcome. Abigail and all of the others smiled. Well, now that all of you are up to par with one another. The both of you go and have a shower. Then think about your consequences of your actions. Issei said with a stern voice. Okay. Irina slumped and Zenobia followed. What did they do? Abigail questioned. Almost went after two individuals, to whom I said not to. Issei's sternness held firm. Who are they? Valper Galilei and Fried Selzin. Everyone widened their eyes in sheer surprise. The genocide archbishop. Some of the girls shouted, while others are confused. Who? The genocide archbishop, the man who ended up leading a project to have kids wield Excalibur. However, the project did not work, and every subject was to be disposed of, from documents to the children. However only one survivor was found. Even though, I found a second. Poor girl. Issei thought. Who was the survivor? He asked inquisitively. Isaiah. He was an orphan, who was supposed to wield the Excaliburs alongside his friends which he called family. As Isaiah had no parents, he never had a last name. After escaping the project site, when all the evidence was to be destroyed. Issei took a breath. Rias Gremory, who is the devil in charge of this town. Was in the forest at the time, came across Isaiah's dying body, to which she reincarnated him into her night. She renamed him to Kibuyudo. Issei finished. What happened with all the others, did anybody else survive? But, just not found. Issei nodded. HMPH. Yes, funnily enough I was also on a scouting request from Michael to check up on the project. I was spectating the place as I was planning to raid it and bring the kids to safety. However, before I could act. They started slaughtering the kids. I saw Isaiah making his way to Ria's without realizing, due to Ria's unrestrained aura back then, I could feel her presence for miles. So, I knew Isaiah was in capable hands. There was, however, a faint aura surge to the right of the facility to which I made my way to. The entity that made the slight surge was a girl of the same age as Isaiah, no more than 13. She was dying. I knew I had to do something quickly to prevent her from her untimely demise. Issei crossed his arms. What did you do? I made her my biological daughter. Issei surprised everyone. I'm sorry, but I think I'm hearing things. Did you just say that you made her your biological daughter? Yes, yes I did. Tosca. Come out of your room. Issei faced towards the stairs and shouted up them. Seconds later, they all hear slow heavy footsteps coming closer. From up top of the stairs, a girl with Issei's white red and sky blue hair and twin braids and cyan eyes. Tosca, come and finally meet the girls. Tosca came up to Issei and gave him a hug, Issei smiled gently and hugged back. Tosca looked at the girls in wary. Tosca looked away slightly in nervousness, then looked back at Issei. Tosca slowly nodded at Issei in acceptance. Ah, well. The girls immediately became smitten with the girl in a type of a sisterly way. We must protect her. They all thought. Tosca. Even though you have been here longer than they have. You and they have not been formally introduced as far as I am aware. After all this time you need to get out of your state of depression. Sigh I know I'm not one to talk. But, you can't be like this forever. Tosca was not making eye contact. I. I. I'm Tosca. Tosca looked back at Issei, who was trying usher her in slowly. Tosca Haidu. Adorable. Suoku Udi. Everyone all gushed on the girl. The say Tosca surprised by their faces was an understatement. Well, I let you have your fun, Tosca. Issei started to walk upstairs. Tosca tried to reach out, but stopped halfway in hesitance. With Issei. Knock knock knock. Arena, Zenovia. You decent. Issei said behind the door. Issei. Issei could hear a crash in the room. What was that? It was nothing. Irina shouted on the other side. Issei switched to Zenovia. Zenovia, what was that? Irina fell off her stool. Zenovia. Irina screamed, most likely in embarrassment. What? He asked. Never mind that, once you're both done here. I want the both of you to meet me downstairs along with everyone for a serious talk. This also concerns the Gremory and Citriarises and their peerages. Issei turned serious. Okay, we will be down in six minutes. Zenovia complied. Alright, I need to make a phone call. Issei then left. On the other side of the door. What do you think he wants to talk about? Irina said. I don't know. Zenovia shrugs. Well, let's hurry up. We don't want to keep Issei waiting. Irina said jovially. With Issei. Ring ring ring. Hello. Ria's picked up. Hello Ria's. Is there by any chance Ona with you? Yes she is. Why do you want to know? Because there is a matter that needs to be brought to light. And, what would that be? I will tell everyone, when you and Sona, bring your respective peerages. Alright, when do you want us to be over? Now? Issei said with seriousness. 
On the other line was dead silence. Okay, we will be there in two minutes. Good. See you in a little while, Riaz. See you in a bit, Issei. But that both Issei and Riaz terminated to call. Issei breathed a sigh. And began to walk to the living room. Son, you are doing this for them, for their own good. Drake tried to console his son. I know dad. But, I made a promise to Serzich's that I wouldn't spill God's death. Yes, you did. But, remember that you also said that when the need arises. You would have to tell them. Yes, I remember. But, I can't help but feel like I'm breaking my promise. You aren't. If anything you are just bending it. And that doesn't make me feel any better. But, if my intuition is correct Kakabiel will most likely reveal God's death anyway. So, saying this to them before everything goes down is better than having them fall during the battle. Issei enters the living making his way to the couch. Oh. Master's back. Saying that, everyone in the room looked at Issei, all while surrounding a very embarrassed Asuka. Hello, everyone. Issei said a bit in thought. What's wrong master? Hmm. Oh, right. Yes, so. Ria's, her peerage and Sona with her peerage are coming in a little while. Because there is something that needs to be addressed. Okay, do you want us to leave and give you privacy? Issei shook his head. No, as far as both of us are concerned. This also has to do with you lot and the two upstairs as well. Issei looked over to all of the maids. Why would it concern us? Olivia tilted her head. Because it has to do with God. The main door to the house opened and who walked in was no other than Tiamat, Issei's mother. Hello, mother. Issei smiled. Hello Issei. How have you been? Tiamat asked. I've been fine. Well, that's good to know. Tiamat smiled. So? How was the job? It went smoothly as always. Sheen. The Gremory and Citri circles appear on the floor in front of them. Riaz and Sona with their peerages emerge. So, hi do. What do you want to talk about? Sona tried to be as stoic as possible, but it was failing as shown to be with a blush on her cheeks. Riaz and Son widened their eyes when they saw Tiamat. You two look like a deer caught in headlights. Tiamat said amused. I will tell you in a minute, we are just waiting for two others. In the meantime, get acquainted with each other. With that. Some of the maids jumped Asia like a sister on sister would, cough Seraphil cough, while the more reserved ones stood there professionally, waiting for their turn at smothering the blonde. Why uh? Asia fell onto her back with the sisters in maid outfits on top of her. So you're Asia. You look more beautiful than the picture Issei has of you. Eh? Thank you. Asia said awkwardly. Girls. Get off of Asia. Issei looked at the girls that were on Asia, looking amused. Yes master. The girls that jumped Asia then slid off of her. It is good to finally meet you Asia, Master has talked about you from time to time. Abigail smiled while speaking in a regal and professional tone. It is nice to meet you as well. Asia smiled. Minutes went by Rias, Sona, and their peerages all introduced themselves to the maids and Tiamat. Tiamat took her place on the couch beside Issei. Irina and Zenovia came down the stairs. Sorry we took so long. Don't be. Issei said. Irina and Zenovia looked at the newly arrived and Tiamat as well, which surprised them greatly. Issei told everyone to sit down. So, why did you all want us here? Riaz said. Sigh here we go. Issei said under his breath. The reason why I brought everyone here today. Is to reveal a secret which only I, my mother and a selection of individuals in the high rankings know, for example, Serzich's and Serafal. In all of the religious campaigns like the Shinto, Greek, Hindu, Norse and other religions know of this as well, which they also all swore to keep this a secret. Tiamat looked at Issei with a facial expression of you're telling them which he caught and nodded back. Tiamat nodded in acceptance. Just get on with it. Saji said impatiently. Saji, just be quiet. Sona scolded the blonde. I made a promise to your brother, Riaz, that I would not tell any of you this. However, with a circumstance such as this. It needs to be said. Issei bent forward and leaned in closer to the large group. In the Great War. It was documented that all of the original Satans died. Lucifer, Leviathan, Asmodeus and Beelzebub. Issei looked around and getting nods from everybody. However. They didn't publicize one lead figure that it also died, as it was deemed too devastating for all of the supernatural and human society to know. Everyone looked uneasy and were starting to sweat the question. W what was I it? Irina was worried. In all of the years she had known Issei. She never saw this side to him. An overly serious person. The leader that died in the Great War. Was old man Yahweh himself. Issei said. Everyone. And I mean everyone except for Issei and Tiamat widened their eyes to the max, all breathing had ceased. What? Everyone screamed. 
Both Asia and Irina fainted, Zenobia struggled to sit up straight without gagging. Some of the girls in the maid attire fainted as well, while the more professional ones became sickly pale, lightheaded, and their legs couldn't support their weight. Ria's and Sona had the same symptoms. The Keno, Kaneko, Tsubaki and the rest of Sona's peerage was in shock and deathly pale, but performed better than either of their kings. Pibba on the other hand was internally raging. If God is dead then all of that torture, the training, abuse, the time spent in the project and the lives that were sacrificed for me to escape was all for nothing. Kiba grit his teeth harder, fists clenched so tightly that blood started to leak from his palms, and his eyes slowly became bloodshot. I will continue once those who have fainted, wake up. Five minutes later. Ugh. What, what happened? Asia slowly came to. Irina woke up second later. However, she became catatonic. Zenovia looked at Issei and said with pleading eyes. Please, please say that this is a joke. Issei looked at Zenovia. I'm sorry, but this isn't a joke. Zenovia, Asia and some of the maids all cried and wept. The more professional maids shed tears, but nothing more than that. Irina was the worst of all of them. Not reacting to anything. She just stared into the abyss and only blinking as a subconscious response. Issei continued. When my father and Albion engaged in the fight with the three factions. It took the four Satans, the four great seraphs, Uncle Azazel, and his second in commands to beat both my father and Albion in 90 minutes. During the fight my dad killed both Beelzebub and Asmodeus. After the two were killed. Odd, saw the destruction and made the two gears that are known as the boosted gear and divine dividing, then shortly after, he perished. However, that's all that is known by both my father and the higher ups. But, I've talked to a certain dragon, who witnessed why God was as weak as he was. Irina looked at Issei, in a half-catatonic state. While well, everyone else had quietened down. Why was he so weak then? I'm pretty sure that he would have survived, as he has made many powerful gears. Riaz said. You're correct, Riaz. If God had his strength then yes, he would have survived. But, he didn't. Why did he not have his strength then? It's because he was sealing a being that rivals both office and great red in terms of power. Silence, utter silence was that could be heard. A minute or two later. What being could be as powerful as Great Red and Office? Ria's shouted. 666. What? Ria's blankly stared at Issei. The apocalyptic beast. A being several times bigger than Great Red. Its sole purpose for existing is to exterminate any and all life on any plant and solar system. Its name is, Trahixa. That is the being that Yaw was sealed, and because Trahixa is so powerful it took basically all of his strength. Creating two extra gears was what killed him. Quite ironic actually. Issei chuckled at the end. Everyone excluding Issei and Tiamat stared into nothingness. Anyway, everyone needs to get to sleep. We can't fight Kakabiel being sleep deprived. Issei stood up and started to walk to the stairs. All of you can stay if you would like. Ria's perked up hearing this. Issei made his way to his bedroom, stripped down to his boxers and slumped into bed. Issei sensed a certain retreat enter his room. But, paid no attention to her. Time skip, morning. Issei woke up to a sight of a specific patch of red hair in his view. Rias? Why is she in my bed? Issei thought. Issei tried to move. However, every time he tried, he would get an unhappy moan from the retreat. Looks like I'm staying here till she wakes up. What a precarious situation, you have found yourself in son. Could be worse. Issei looked at Rias' sleeping form. Hmm. Rias started to stir. Well, good morning princess. Issei said with a grin. Rias managed to wake up. Taking a moment to realize what he said, she went bright red. Almost immediately after realizing, she hid her face within Issei's chest. Idiot, why are you saying things like that? Ria's rose her head. Aren't you a princess? Issei said with a grin. Ria's buried her head in embarrassment. Issei chuckled. It's not funny. Ria's pouted. Alright. Time to get up, it's Friday. Which means, all of us need to get ready for school. Ria slumped in disappointment. Don't give me that look. Issei said still grinning. Ria's pouted even more. Come on, get up. We need to leave soon. Issei proceeded to get up from the bed. New. No. I want to stay here. Ria's pushed Issei down on the bed and put her full body weight on him. You are really making me do this aren't you? No response. Fine. Have it your way. Issei gained a savage and bloodthirsty grin. Ria's demonic instincts kick into high alert. Issei started tickling Ria's furiously. Not being fast enough, Ria's was caught on the other end. Issei mercilessly made Ria's cough up her lungs at the end of it all. How's this Ria's, are you finally awake now? Ha 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 ha. Yes. Yes, I'm awake. Ria's was laughing so much she couldn't breath. Issei stopped tickling Ria's and went to get ready for school. Bully. Ria's said under her breath while pouting. I heard that. 
Issei's voice resonated from the room. Our academy. Issei and the rest of the orc walk together to school with Ria's holding his right arm. Akeno, holding his left. Kaneko who was on Issei's left shoulder eating her delectables in Asia, who was taking in the height, was on his right shoulder. When they strode in through the school gates. Everyone was in awe, jealousy and shock. A group of girls situated near the entrance gate. What? The king is with the queens. One of them said. Not only them. But, the mask at Kaneko too. The others next to them stayed quiet. Opposite to them were a group of boys. To say they were pissed was an understatement. No fucking wayy. The rest of the hormonal-driven males loathed Issei in their minds. Just ignore them. Issei said annoyed. Oh, we already do. Rhea said while smiling towards Issei. Yes, I know you all do. But, I'm more protective of all of you now. So, I don't want anyone. And I mean anyone to hurt those I love and care about. I'll kill them if they do. Issei spoke seriously. But, laced with loving care. Rhea's and the other girls blushed. Issei kissed all the girls in order of Rhea's, Akeno, Asia and Kaneko. The onlookers were stunned and unable to comprehend what just happened. After bidding farewell to Rhea's and Akeno. Issei, Asia and Kaneko make their way to the classroom. Time skip, classroom. As usual, as the three enter the room they hear shouting and overall chaos. And get any worse, right? Issei thought. Don't jinx it, Issei. Drake said to his son. Inhales. Every one of you calm the fuck down and sit in your seats. Issei bellowed making everybody present jump. Due to Issei's intimidation, all of those in the room, with the exception of both Asia and Kaneko, immediately sat down, not saying anything. Good. Issei breathed a sigh of relief. Those sit down girls. Issei directed to his two companions. Issei proceeded to walk towards his seat with the others trailing their gaze on him. The females looked at him with admiration, while the males with fear. This was going to be a weird day. Time skip, lunch break. Issei was on the rooftop of the school, taking in the breeze that was colliding with his face. Issei would come to places like this to clear his mind and free his emotions. He felt, smelt and heard multiple different things. The nature, the vehicles moving throughout the town. Bara, what do we have here? Issei turned around to find that Akeno and Rias were standing next to each other and looking at him. Rias, Akeno. I thought you were in class. We got let out early. So, what better way to spend it with the one we want to be with? Rias answered with a smile plastered on her face. Alright, that explains why you two are here. Speaking of. Why are you here, Issei? Rias put her hand on her waist. Clearing my thoughts. I like the open air, it makes me feel calm, and it puts my mind at ease. Issei turned back around and leaned on the railing. That's actually a reasonable answer. Rias was astounded. What did you come to talk about? Issei stared out at the horizon. Rias and Akeno move besides Issei as they stare out at the same scenery. This view is beautiful. Rias said. Not as beautiful as the both of you two. Issei turned to Rias with a grin. Rias turned bright red. Ara, Issei I never knew you was such a sweet talker. Perhaps after the event with Kakabiel, we could have time together. Akeno said with a seductive tone. Akeno, if anyone deserves to go out with him first it will be me. Rias tried to claim her man by holding tightly on Issei's arm. Ara, have you forgotten Rias? We all agreed to share Issei. Akeno did the same as Rias. Rias, quell your jealousy. If I remember correctly, I said that I will love all of you equally. No one is number one. To me all of you are number one. Issei pulled an Uno reverse and embraced the two devils instead. Rias blushed in Issei's chest. Akeno surprisingly blushed as well. Issei, Rias and Akeno stayed like that for the rest of day. Time skip, sunset, night. Issei, Rias, Sona and their peerages with the two exorcists were cooped up in the orc, devising a plan to deal with Kakabiel. So, Issei it's your call. You've lived longer than us and most likely planned may battles like this before. Sona said. That's correct, Sona. But, I want to see your plan first. Very well. Sona pushed her glasses up the bridge of her nose with the lenses reflecting. As we all know. Kakabiel is a leader-class cadre fallen angel that has survived the Great War. Thanks to Issei's uncle, Azazel. He has confirmed that Kakabiel has indeed defected from the Grigori. Issei cut in. Actually Azazel made the change to Kakabiel's allegiance from the Grigori to the Chaos Brigade at the time of Irvina's death as he was a part of it. Issei said with seething fury. It's alright dear. We will have our vengeance when the time comes. Urbina randomly spoke out of the blue. In turn, startling everyone in the room, except Issei. Issei? Is that your? Rias got a nod from Issei. At that moment Issei's aura spread off of him and detached. The aura then began to mold into a figure. Within a matter of seconds the figure gained a great amount of features. 
In the end the aura had become a vestal for Irvina. To say flabbergasted was an understatement. They had never seen Irvina, nor had they ever thought she was as beautiful and elegant as she is currently. Is that? Rhea screamed. Greetings all. Irvina smiled and hugged to say. I. Rhea's couldn't even form any kind of words. They seem very surprised, dear. Irvina giggled. They've never seen you. So, I understand their reaction. Issei grinned. Anyway, you may continue, Citri. Irvina said. Sona snapped out of her trance. All right, well, as I was saying. We, the student council will create a barrier while Rhea's and her peerage fight Kakabiel on the inside. He will more than likely have the genocide archbishop and that stray priest. Valper is mine to kill. Kiba spoke with hidden anger. That's all well and good, Sona. But. You forgot one thing. Issei held a stoic and serious face. And what would that be, Issei? Sona rose her eyebrow. The Kabiel will want to make your spirits in fighting him null. Therefore, breaking you spiritually before killing you. Out of nowhere Issei snapped his fingers. A magic circle spawned on the ground, and the fifteen of Issei's maids wearing battle attire appeared. Hello everyone. Abigail spoke with a smile. Issei spoke up. I just want to say that this is my secondary peerage. Sona was confused. Secondary peerage. No one has ever gotten two peerage sets before, not even my sister and Rhea's brother. Issei chuckled. Well, how do I say this? I am the only one who has ever been able to have two peerages at once. But. If it's a rating game thing, I can choose which peerage I can take to the field. Although, my second peerage isn't completer to put, I haven't found any members as of yet. Issei took a breather. My proper peerage is the incomplete one. This peerage is the asterisk peerage. But, the girls wanted me to be their new king. So, I fused my aura into their pieces that were already currently in them, eliminating the devil's side in them, and replacing it with a dragon heritage. The church group then unfurled their dragon wings that were the color of their respective hair color. Everyone was left was mesmerized once again. Asia subconsciously outstretched her hand to the girl's wings. However, she realized what she was doing and reeled her hand back to her chest in embarrassment. Sorry. Asia spoke in a meek tone. If you wanted to feel them, all you had to do was ask. Abigail said smiling sweetly. Abigail and the others came closer to Asia and lowered their wings in front of her. Asia's eyes lit up like stars. Issei smiled while looking at the scene. As of until now, I have been training and having them train ever since I took them in. They didn't want to be weak. So, they asked me to help train them to get a lot stronger. Everyone in the room shivered, remembering the brutality. As a result they have grown tenfold in strength throughout this in the last few years. In terms of strength, how strong are they to us? Rhea said. Issei grinned viciously. Strong enough to make my queen rival your brother's queen in both power of magical capability and physical prowess, dare I say more. Rhea's, Sona's and their peerage's breaths hitched. Let's put this into perspective. These girls. Issei directed to eight girls, all in their late teens. Are the pawns of the peerage. Everyone looked towards the eight. They are strong enough to vs Sererg and his entire peerage, by themselves. At this point everyone else weren't surprised anymore. But, enough of that. My plan is this. Time skip, five minutes of explaining. Does everyone understand the plan? Everyone nodded. Rumble. Issei turned dead serious with releasing the threat of killing intent. Seems he's made his descent. About fucking time. We are walking outside. Do not panic, stay calm and remember your roles. Everyone present nodded. Outside. The Kabiel was bored, that was an understatement. He was bored out of his mind, so much so that the term, dying of boredom was actually happening to him. He thought that allowing the devils to sense his presence, they would come running. However, he was met with a dead and eerie silence. Yo, boss. Why is no one here? I should be killing some devil shits by now. Freed felt bored, frustrated annoyed and pissed. That, I cannot answer Freed as I don't sense any of them, I haven't for a while. Boss, the three Excaliburs are going to be fused in two minutes. Valper said. Good. Out of nowhere, multiple entities flooded out of the trees flanking them in a pincer maneuver in all black clothing covering them head to toe. One striking at Valper, seven to eight striking at Freed, and the rest enclosing on Kakabiel. Those that were in close range fought with ranged attacks. Flashback, Orc. My plan is this. Issei threw black clothing on the table. We will wear these. Flanking Kakabiel and his entourage will be the best approach. Issei said pointing to the fabric. Sona spoke up that's all well and good. But, have you forgotten that he can sense us? That and we need to erect a barrier so the humans won't discover the supernatural. Well, it's a good thing that I came prepared. Issei grinned. Everyone was confused. Issei clicked his fingers. Within a nanosecond everyone shone a bright silver around their person. What did you just do? 
Sona glared at Issei. I have made every single one of us rendered invisible to Kakabiel. Essentially I have created a type of personal shield that makes the opponent unable to sense us through our auras and power. I have also erected that said barrier earlier, and said barrier will not let anyone enter or exit without my approval. Anyway. These clothes will allow us to blend in with our surroundings, e.g. the trees, bushes and shrubbery. Issei took out a device and slid it along the table until it stopped dead in the middle. Issei took out a stick of sorts from his pocket and aimed it at the device and pressed a button. The device sprung to life as it gained luminosity with a light blue color. The device then projected a replica of the whole school as a hologram. Shock was the only thing that everyone had, minus Issei and Dreg. This device I made was for scouting and tracking. Basically in minimalistic terms, a hologram. We are here. Issei pointed at the old school building with multiple white dots. These dots are us. Issei directed to the dots. One question. Yes Sona. How does this know where we are? That I want to know. Simple. The barrier I erected has a type of tracking system that's why this is used for scouting and tracking. The barrier knows who is friend from foe. Then if that's us. Then, who are they? Rias pointed to the red dot that were placed on the running track. The say deadpanned, Sona facipumed, and everyone else just stared at Rias. What? Really? What? Psy those three are Kakabiel, Freed and Valper. Realization dawns on Rias at that moment in the next, Rias was slumped over in the corner on why was she so stupid. Issei ignored Rias and proceeded with his plan. As I was saying, these outfits we'll be wearing will be able to get us up close and personal. So, how do you suppose we do that then? Sona complained. We need to divide into three sections. Artillery, long range and close quarter combatants. So, who will be who then? Joanne and Lydia who are my bishops and Abigail who you all know is my queen have magic that are affected by gravity, which are good for a surprise overhead attack, like a sword of Hotzer. For those that specialize in long range, those roles will be for Rias, Sona, Momo, Ria and some of my pawns as they are long range as well. The closer range fighters, that being Kiba, Kaneko, Saji, Roroko, Tubasa, my rooks knights and rest of my pawns. Issei listed. Kiba will go after Valper alone as it's a personal thing. Issei winked to Kiba, which he acknowledged. Zenovia, Irina and the knights will attack Freed. Everyone wielding a sword that was not Kiba nodded. Everyone else will attack Akabiel. What about you? Aren't you going to do anything? Sona questioned. First, I'll do this. Issei smirked. Boost, X300. Everyone in the room widened their eyes in shock. What the fuck? Saji screamed. The vision transfer. Everyone suddenly gained massive amounts of energy. What? Was? That? Rhea screamed in pleasure. An ability I have created myself. Division transfer allows me to transfer to multiple people at the same time without the use of having for physical contact. The more boosts I have stockpiled, the more of the energy can be transferred, whether to more people or with more boosts. As of right now there are. Issei quickly counted. 29 of you, excluding me as 30. But I have essentially divided my boosts up into 10s for all of you to share. Now all of you are 10 times stronger than you normally would be. Nobody could believe what Issei just said. As both Serzichas and Serafal are the older sisters of Rias and Sona. I've called them and telling the situation. Serzichas was pretty livid that Kakabiel wants to start a new war by kill you, Rias. As for Serafal, when I told her, she went ballistic, running around screaming. So, yeah you can imagine how that went. Rias and Sona went deadly pale. But, I did say to both of them that I would take care of this. As Kakabiel is mine to kill. Issei eyes turned to slits. Flashback end, present. As planned Kiba striked at Valper grazing him on his torso. Ugh. Valper grunted. Kiba took a stance. This will be the end for you Valper. Me and my family will be at peace. Who are you boy? Valper questioned. Kiba took his mask off. Hmm. I remember you, they said one of the subjects had escaped. That's right, I escaped because of the others but for him to become a lowly devil. I am thankful to you brats. Thanks to you, I was able to perfect and complete my work. Valper held his hand to where Kiba had slashed him. Kiba gripped his sword tightly. Perfected. Complete. What do mean? We were dubbed as failures were we not. Kiba narrowed his eyes his hatred. DCH. Individually yes, you all were failures. But, altogether. Far from it. I came to a conclusion that if I were to extract the holy element, which all of you brats had and combined them to make a solidified version, I'd be able to wield the Excalibur. Valper laughed maniacally. Kiba widened his eyes in horror. However. That was not possible. Valper then took out a blue crystal of sorts. Kiba stared at the crystal in realization. This crystal specifically contains your family you seem to be so attached to. Zenovia had a flash in her memories. After what I did. 
they excommunicated me and used my research. I was livid, I wanted some way to get them back. Even if they took out the gene from subjects, I'm sure they are still alive and well. There was no need to kill all of us then. So, why? Kiba's restraint was beginning to slip. Alper laughed. Why? Well, I'll tell you. All of you were nothing but pawns, tools and materials to be used for my pleasure. That in the top secret project. Once I had my fill, there was nothing left to do but dispose of the evidence. Valper grinned. All of us believed that we were doing this for God and endured the pain, torment and torture this whole time. Kiba's grip on his sword tightened even more. Now I see. Everything we did. Everything we all went through. We were just disposable toys to you. Valper threw the crystal at Kiba. If you want it so badly, here. Take it. We can already produce higher quality ones after all, I don't need it anymore. Kiba left his stance and picked up the crystal. Flashback of when his family were slaughtered appeared. Everyone. Valper Galilei. How many did you toy with for the sake of your sick and twisted ambitions? That began to glow brighter and brighter. Slowly the light took the forms of several figures around Kiba. I kept wondering. If it was ever okay for me to be the one to breath and live a life how I wanted. Well my family, those who I grew close with, die and suffer. Those who were younger than me had dreams of their own, dreams more than I ever wanted. Kids who had more purpose to live than I ever did. Me. Living a life I was given. A chance to live how I want. It was then Kiba then realized the figures beside him. Kiba could not believe what he was seeing. One of the figures a short girl with blonde hair and green eyes that once held life in them, tugged onto Kiba's black sleeve and looked up at him. Then the souls of the children disperse flying around Kiba as balls of light. It's okay. If everyone is gathered together. Take us in. The spirits then gathered around Kiba. It's not scary even if there is no God. Even if God isn't watching over us. Our hearts will always be. One. Kiba cried as he finished. Everyone excluding Issei, Sona, Riaz, Akeno and Kaneko cry. Zenovia let out some tears here and there. But, Irina cried with everything she had. Over with Issei and the others. Issei sensed Kiba peaking his power. I see. So, he finally achieves it. Everyone practically looked at Issei. What do you mean, Issei? Riaz asked. He has reached the pinnacle of his power temporarily. Resulting in him being able to obtain his balance breaker. With the upsurge of emotions flowing through him, this is exactly what he needed. So, Kiba is. Yes, he is. Back with Kiba. Kiba strides over to Valper. My family, the ones that sacrificed themselves for me, didn't want me to live for revenge. No, that's not what they wanted. But, I felt like I had to erase the one who made us suffer. So, that is exactly what I am going to do. Kiba summoned his holy sword eraser. Valper sensed the danger that was directed at him. Freed. Ahaha, I'm here as you called. As Freed guarded Valper. Pathetic wimp, you should have killed yourself along with the rest of them. Valper said. Issei shouted out to Kiba. Kiba, you are at a serious point in your training now. From now on, expect said training to be more taxing for you. Kiba sweat dropped. At the moment everyone was stood still and was glancing over at Kiba and Issei. Ria said. Kiba, you can do it. Fight like a house of grimery, take that priest and that fake sword, and show them who not to mess with. A true knight of mine cannot lose to such a weak foe. Kiba looked at them with sheer determination. Freed became incredibly uncomfortable. This shit putrid another scene from the house of Gagmi Gremory. Ugh. It's starting to making my skin crawl. I can't take this disgusting shit anymore. I need to kill every one of you to make myself feel much better. Ugh. Freed then aims his sword at Kiba. Kiba looked at his holy eraser. This won't cut it I'm afraid. So, time for a new sword. Kiba stretched the sword up into the air. Dear comrades, whose souls have merged with mine. We shall overcome this together. All our dreams that were stifled can now come true. I will create a sword for real this time for Ria's and all of my fallen friends. Sword birth, go. The sword that Kiba held high in the sky, changed shape. This is the sword of betrayer. A sword invested with holy and demonic powers. Just try and stop it. Ria spoke. Holy and demonic powers fused into one. Correct, Ria's. Issei answered. Alper said. A holy demonic sword. That's impossible. Two opposing elements cannot mix together. Something like that is a complete and utter abomination. Zenovia randomly appeared. So, Knight of Gremory. How are we going to go about this? Going to destroy the Excalibur then, kill Valper. Kiba replied. I see. Well then. Allow me to assist you with that task. Kiba was caught off guard. Are you sure? Won't the church cast you out as a heretic for helping a devil? That would usually be the norm. However, due to Issei having so much influence in the supernatural. Archangel Michael made him the person we report to personally. And when we get back to report to HQ. 
Issei will be with us. Alright then. I appreciate the help then. Zenobia decided to get serious. She stuck Excalibur destruction into the ground and began to chant as she stretched out her right arm to the side. Saint Peter, Saint Basilius, Saint Dionysius and the Blessed Virgin Mary. I ask you to heed our help in time of great need. At that moment a light golden magic circle appeared, and what came with it was the holy sword Durandal bound in chains. Zenobia grabbed the handle of Durandal, as she did the chains binding the great sword vanished. Which allowed her to ready into a stance, prepared to combat the fused Excalibur. The other designated girls that were assigned to deal with Freed had also joined the fray. Alper within his mutterings came to the truth. In order for the demonic and holy energies to. Ha 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 ha. That's it. The reason why this phenomenon can exist is because God is. Right when he was about to finish his sentence a bolt of light sift through his torso. Ah dot Valper, you was a valuable asset in the beginning. But now you are expendable, you've done your part. You was close to spilling God's death. Kakabiel grinned. Kakabiel, who expected everyone around the battlefield to wear questionable and angsty looks on their faces. However, he soon quickly came to see that everyone was not phased in the slightest. Kakabiel's amusement changed to confusion and annoyance. Why aren't you all phased? Everyone just stood there looking at Kakabiel uninterested with a deadpan facial expression. Not that he could see them anyway. Phased by what? The fact that God is dead. Issei spoke with crossed arms and a concealed aggression. Kakabiel was genuinely shocked. How do you know? I haven't even told any of you yet. Issei narrowed his eyes. And his pupils turned to stilts. Because. Issei took off the black cloth that covered his face. When he did all the others did the same. The Kabiel was at first was caught by surprise. However that quickly shifted to that of laughter. Ha ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. You. You're the one that was with that girl. The white-headed one. The one we left in that cave to die all of those years ago. Issei could feel his blood boil. He subconsciously leaked his aura. Not enough to the point of interruption. But, slightly noticeable by those close to him. Issei's unwavering gaze pierced through Kakabiel like a spear or a ballista bolt. The rest of everyone else except Ria's, her peerage and Irvina, who had re-entered Issei's soul within the boosted gear, looked at him in curiosity. That includes his own peerage. Before now, he had never said anything to anyone about the tragic deaths of Irvina and their unborn child. So, for all of the girls in his peerage. They had never known. They had always tried. Definition tried to get closer to Issei as they had developed feelings towards him. Yet, he would always either push them away or avoid the entire subject altogether. There were times where they had asked him to tell them why he would always push them away. However, he would always say it's personal or I don't like talking about it. And dismiss the question altogether. Her name was Irvina. Issei spoke through gritted teeth. And she was my everything. I loved her like no other. But, that all fell apart. Issei was having traumatic flashbacks, images cycled from to the entrance of the cave he used to live in, with every image reaching closer and closer. Then to switch to the inside of the entrance closing in on what haunts him, even though Irvina is with him now. Being in the boosted gear like Drake. Every time Issei slept. He would have the same recurring nightmare. No, night terror is more like it. And there was nothing that Irvina nor Drake could do to help their husband's son. The images started to get worse and worse as time went by. Seconds turned to minutes. Minutes into hours. For everyone else, only 12 seconds had passed. All of the girls, Kiba and Saji grew concerned for Issei, and they tried to get his attention. However, it was for naught as Issei continued to ignore them. That was when Drake spoke. Issei is having a post-traumatic event as of right now. He is not able to hear anyone. Not even me. He has a lot of these dreams and I can't get rid of them. Rhea says to Drake. What does he experience? The experience is the same nightmare almost every single night. A lot of the time I have to pull him in the boosted gear and comfort him. He suffers the nightmares that take place in the cave to which his mate was killed and strung. Deep within the confines of Issei's hallucinating vision. The turn that Issei was once again dreading, of what he would see. You would think that after multiple times of having the same recurring nightmare over and over and over again would make the feelings inside of you dull. No, it doesn't. It all stays the same or it may worsen, if one tries to move past it. They'll always be reminded of the experiences and that will never fade. The vision slides around the corner and lo and behold. Irvina's body in the same place as she always is. Lifeless, unmoving, pale and limp. The vision snaps to different points while looking directly at her body. First a close-up shot of her face. Next, bottom right hand side, then overhead left. Same as always Issei falls to the ground in despair. Issei grabbed his head and mentally screams. Will this ever end? Issei finally for what felt like an eternity blinked back to reality and found everyone staring at him. Issei. 
He turned to the voice, who was Ria's with a very concerned and worried expression that contained tears of which were threatening to leak. Ria's, why are you crying? Issei then proceeded to look around the field. Most all of the girl were crying and some were completely distraught and saddened. Greg told us what you experience basically every night. Ria's held Issei's hands in a comforting manner. Issei felt angry. Not at them. But, at himself. Himself for showing that side, his vulnerable side. Sorry Ria's. For making all of you worry. Issei smiled. You idiot. Ria's hugged Issei tightly. Well, now isn't that just putrid? Kakabiel said disgusted and bored. I'm going to deal with a sack of shit, half-assed elf wanted. Issei faced and bore straight through Kakabiel. Kakabiel smirked. Now this is what I've been waiting for. You are dead Kakabiel. Dead. Issei released his dragon wings. Oh, really? Say that to your now dead wife. You. Take. That. Bok. Issei roared at Kakabiel with fury. Issei charged at Kakabiel. Kakabiel ready to light sword to counteract. As Issei charged, he brought out the Yamato he used in the fight against Riser. Yamato glowed with power. Want to know bad thing about her back then? Kakabiel said. Issei stayed silent. It's the fact that I couldn't even enjoy her. For one her cherry was popped. And two that Lucifer wouldn't allow me to take her as my concubine. I was really looking forward to a new toy to play with. Kakabiel said disappointed. Every female covered their mouths. The whole of Issei's peerage members' reactions were worse. As they've been in that position for a long time. They sympathized with Irvina. As a reaction they cried a lot. Issei hovered in the air unmoving with his white, red and blue multicolored hair covering his face. Fallen Angel Kakabiel. You slaughtered my son's maid and one of the ones responsible for her death. You have made a big fucking mistake. And for that you shall pay for your transgressions. Drag exploded with pure unbridled rage. Execution Dragon. Balance Breaker. This balance breaker think of it as a 7 feet 2 inches tall, bulky, red-blue and white version of the Welsh balance breaker. Basically a mix between Drake's red scales and Tiamat's blue scales. I'll rip your flesh off your corpse. Issei's aura surged forming into that of a colossal dragon of red that roared in unison with Issei. Ahahahahaha. <laughs> Yyyess, come dragon. Kakabia laughed maniacally. At a speed that could almost match the speed of light. Issei launched at an unprepared Kakabia. Bikabiel, who was not ready for what came, was smacked into the ground so hard that the environment was cratered by a 5 meters x 5 meters radius. Everyone, who had taken care of Freed, looked around the field towards the dust and debris, waiting. Back. Woog. Kakabiel was hurt and an obvious pain. As the debris started to clear, Issei was seen hovering in the air with his aura covering his body like a shield. Bikabiel could be seen with multiple scrapes, cuts, dislocated jaw, blood running down his pale face, and quite possibly a broken bone. Ah! Kakabiel popped his jaw back into his socket. That was truly a tremendous punch, I'll give you that. As expected of the Dragon of Domination's offspring. Bikabiel went to get back up. However, before he could. His sight went black and his face was covered by a hand. Issei grabbed onto Kakabiel's face and proceeded to drag his whole entire body through the ground. But this say flying so quickly, Kakabiel couldn't react fast enough and was thrown into the school as the rubble and debris collapsed onto him. Issei landed on the ground. Issei stared at the crumbling area where he threw Kakabiel. Sona thought. Great. Thanks a lot Issei. Now I need to repair the school after this. I was hoping to avoid collateral damage. Kakabiel came flying out with blood mostly all over his face and his attire that he wore torn, dirty and tattered. Even though Kakabiel came at Issei relatively fast. But, Issei was able to react way faster and evaded out of the way. While grabbing one of Kakabiel's outstretched legs, Issei flung Kakabiel back overhead and into the ground in front of Issei. To which Issei clambered on top of him and started to pummel Kakabiel in the head over and over again. With each smash to the face, Kakabiel's vision blurred more and more. When Issei stopped punching Kakabiel. His face was battered and all kinds of fucked up. Issei took a deep breath and got off the beaten fallen. Kakabiel let out a raspy and painful wheeze. Issei turned away and took a few steps forwards away from the angel. Everyone was confused. Why was Issei walking away from Kakabiel? The magic circle spawned on the ground and a chainsaw came out of it. Then that was when everyone realized what he was doing. Issei, what the fuck are you doing? Rhea shouted. Issei said nothing. Silence was all they received. Issei grabbed the weapon and pulled on the cord, nothing. Second tug, nothing. On the third tug of the cord, the chainsaw roared to life. With the menacing engine on, it struck fear into Kakabiel, who had no energy to move, and too he couldn't see clearly for that matter. Issei lifted the chainsaw up and carrying it with his left hand on the metal horizontal bar and the right hand on the handle that had the trigger. 
Issei retracted his helmet. Through all of this. Issei had his head lowered with his hair covering the upper part of his face. Which with each step coming closer to Kakabiel, the more daunting it became for everyone. That was then everyone heard Issei say with his bang still covering his eyes. You and that Lucifer took something from me. Someone I held dear, more than anything in this world. As if killing her and making me suffer was terrible and agonizing. You wanted to rape her and make her your sex slave. Issei said with the motor of the engine still thurning. Issei. Everyone said under their breath. Issei then lifted his head to reveal hollow black eyes, which horrified Kakabiel to no end. Well, I will take something that you hold dear, right from your core. No. He's not going to. Everyone thought. Issei kicked Kakabiel onto his front as he was on his back and stamped on all ten wings. Their wings. With Issei's feet pinning Kakabiel's wings to the ground. There was nothing Kakabiel could do. No. PL please. Not my wings. Kakabiel screeched. Issei didn't listen. Instead, he proceeded to position the chainsaw and rev the engine. Issei placed the blade of the chainsaw near Kakabiel's wings. Pliasi. I will give you anything. Issei kept the blade hovering over the black feathery wings. Issei took a hold of the trigger and held it down. The bladed chain now spinning viciously. Everyone stared with mouths agape. The maiden peerage covered both Asia's eyes and ears, while also surrounding her vision to make sure she doesn't experience any mental trauma. Sona and her peerage looked away. Rias and her peerage minus Asia, stared at Issei. Without any hesitation Issei dove the chainsaw and grinded through all of Kakabiel's wings on his right side, separating them from his main body. Aya. Kakabiel squealed in pain as liters of blood came spewing out. Issei threw the five useless wings away and prepared to do the same to the other side. Once again, Issei positioned the chainsaw over the last remaining five wings from Kakabiel's pathetic and heaving body. Issei pulled the trigger again. The chain spun rapidly with the blood still coating it. Then with one clean slice. Slang. The blood of the severed wings splattered all over Issei's face and body, staining him. Ah. Kakabiel writhed in pure agony. Issei then summoned another magic circle and threw the chainsaw through it. As the circle vanished. Issei walked over to a Kakabiel, who was trying to crawl away. Issei then kicked him onto his back to look directly straight up at him. Issei grabbed the scruff of Kakabiel's collar and pulled him close towards Issei's face. I am the storm that approaches. I am the reason that black clouds exist in isolation. I am the reclaimer of my family's name. And my family's crest is a dragon of death. Remember that Kakabiel. Remember it well. Issei said with angst and rage. Issei, Bali is here. Good to see my student once again. Issei smiled. The figure in the sky surrounded in white armor hovered in the sky. The figure proceeded to fly down towards Issei. It is destined that when both the red and white dragon emperors meet, they fight to the death. Even if it means sacrificing their own life to do it. Yet, no matter how many previous white emperors come before, they are overtaken by lust for power in which they always fall to the juggernaut drive. No white dragon emperor wielder has ever succeeded in making a scratch on Issei. Let alone killing him. So, when Riaz and everyone else sees this newcomer, who is apparently the white dragon emperor bowing down to Issei. This is bound to cause some shock and awe. Master, you have returned. I have been training as you kept on requesting. The figure in white spoke in a smooth and light voice. Vali. How many times do I have to say? Issei looked at the now named Vali, who was still bowing down to him. This Vali person deactivated her balance breaker to reveal that the person was a female, who was just as curvaceous as Ria's, and dare I say Akeno as well. Not to bow down to you and stop calling you master. Vali slowly stood up with Issei's assistance. Not that she needed any though. Vali blushed at the physical contact she has. Ria saw this and grew jealous. Ria stomped over to Issei and pulled on his ear. Ow, ow, oh, oh, oh. Ria spoke into Issei's ear. Issei. Who is she? And does she know you? Ow, ow, ow. Okay, okay. Just, let go. Please. Ria's granted Issei's wish. HMPH. Now, explain. Issei sighed in relief. Okay. Ria's, everyone. I introduce you all to Vali Lucifer. Vali this. Ria's and her peerage, Sona and her peerage and Astra sex peerage. I know, Issei. Vali looked over them all, while Issei gained a wry smile in embarrassment. Everyone was speechless. There before them was an actual descendant of the Lucifer clan. Anuyi. Vali is a treasured student of mine. Uncle Azazel requested that I help train her many years ago to combat her grandfather. Issei went behind her and placed both of his hands on her shoulders. To which she blushed furiously. Issei seemed to be oblivious to this though. Rias grew red in the face with jealousy. Why can't that be me? Anyway, have you found anything more about the Chaos Brigade? 
Issei looked down at Bali who was still shorter than him by a foot. Yes. I have. Good, what about? Rizavam is in control of the whole organization. Bali was about to continue. But Issei's immense aura pushed her and all the others to the ground. Even Kakabiel, who had been just watching from the sidelines was being crushed by the unnatural strength. Rizavam. I will make you regret what you did to me. Bray roared with Issei in tandem. After a while Issei calmed down. Thank you Vali. Because of what you did I will get you reward. After saying that Vali and everyone else were confused that was until they all saw Issei give Vali a kiss on the cheek. Vali then went bright red and even fainted. Rias at this point was so pure jealous and was pouting really hard. The Keno, however. Ara, Issei you charmer. Maybe if I do something worthy of a reward maybe, I could get something like that. A Keno in a seductive tone. If you try hard enough then, yeah maybe. Issei grinned. I'm guessing uncle sent Vali to pick up Kakabiel. As Vali is out for the count I need one of you girls to help carry her to my bedroom in my house, so she may rest. Issei went over to Kakabiel. And where are you going? Rias questioned. Issei picked Kakabiel and hoisted him over his shoulder and looked over to Rias. Just taking the sack of shit to uncle, which is not too far as he owns a place here in Cow. Oh, and don't worry. Serzichas has given him the approval a long time ago. And with that Issei took to the skies with Kakabiel unconscious body flailing around. Rias was left gobsmacked. She faces towards Akeno. Did he just? Akeno just kept quiet. Going over to Vali's still red and unconscious body. Picking her up she stood next to Rias with everyone else teleporting them back to Issei's residence. That's it guys. Thanks for watching and supporting us. See you in the next part.